Kusa Steel is a family-owned full-line steel service center located in Rome, Georgia. Since 1972, we've been working to make our customers more efficient by providing steel product supply and processing all in one place. We are proud to provide a large range of products, including hot rolled and cold finished steel, stainless steel, galvanized steel, aluminum, and alloys. Our capabilities enable us to assemble and process steel orders within days, shortening your lead time. Kusa Steel, steel for your project. At Rome Orthopedic Center, we salute students, freshmen and seniors, athletes and artists, first stringers and choral singers, band majors and game changers. We hope you never need orthopedic care, but if you do, choose the only practice in the Rome area solely dedicated to the orthopedic needs of the students and families in our community. Rome Orthopedic Center. To make an appointment, call 706-292-0040. We're proud to wear purple and white. Because Tigers strive for greatness. In the classroom and on the field. We know that we can do anything. Be anything. Achieve anything. We're part of a program that is 100% dedicated to nourishing our minds and our bodies. As teammates, we push each other further than we ever thought we could go. Because every single one of us has something to contribute. We practice hard so that when we compete, we can leave it all out on the field. With each win, we build confidence. With each loss is a lesson. Our coaches teach us more than technique. They prepare us to be good teammates. Friends and people. We face adversity together. And push through to reach our goals. We may struggle. But we will never give up. Because today. Because today. Because today. Because today, tomorrow, forever. We're Darlington Tigers. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Welburn family since 1974, that's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. At Northwest Georgia Media, we're all about capturing the moments that matter to you. From sports to arts, from concerts to business events, we're equipped to share what's happening in your world, live and in high definition. We leverage cutting edge technology and a knowledgeable crew to see that your most unforgettable events remain just that, unforgettable. You've got the graphics at a high level, ESPN style, scoreboard angles, instant replay, anything you would expect to see on a, a regular broadcast, we're getting in a high school ball game. They're set up, you wouldn't even know that they're even in the building. You just trust that they're getting the job done. Northwest Georgia Media, where the world is your audience.
like to know is, is how do you take a, a game like that, a loss like that, a tough loss, uh, and, and, you know, what lessons do you feel like you can teach the team? What opportunities to grow are there from a game like that? Well, anytime, anytime we lose, I mean, the first person I'm going to look in the mirror at is myself. You know, what can I do better? You know, how can I coach it better? You know, and, and what, what ended up, you know, happening to make that, that, that game the result what it was. So, you know, I'm going to look at the film. I'm going to look at what we did at practice, you know, and then make the corrections, you know, explain to the kids that, you know, one game is not going to define our season. You know, we still have goals ahead of us as far as, you know, getting a home playoff game and, 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 and doing that kind of thing. And so, you know, your mentality has got to be you, you, you do one or two things. You, you, you drop your head and you sout, you know, you, you, you pout and you, you sulk a little bit, or you can look in the mirror, you can take responsibility. You can say, Hey, this is what I got to improve on. We got a plan to go out and do that. You, so you put your work boots on and you get your best attitude and you go out there and you get better. And that's what we, what we did this week. Well, coach, let's talk about some of the bright spots in the game. Of course, our honeymoon bakery icing on the cake player of the game this past week was Adi to Salas. He's done a great job for you. His poor performance that night was highlighted by a 32-yard field goal that gave you guys the first points of the game. Uh, what can you tell us about how he's improved and developed in, in his work ethic? Well, Ade's going to keep getting stronger in the weight room, and that's that's the main thing for kickers. And he's got great flexibility, and then he has a, he had a desire to be a good kicker, so he works at it. You know, during practice, they you know after we do our initial special teams and 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 indie some indie things. Him and the kickers, they go up on the on the game field and, and they have a script that they work through and he's worked really hard at doing that and getting better at lots of different kicks from different angles and as far as uh, you know, pop ups and, and different drive kicks and stuff that you've seen us use in kind of our special teams weapon, you know, bullet chamber, I guess you'd say. So, you know, he's worked really hard and so, you know, again, you know, we we put him in a field goal situation yeah. earlier in the year, and I, I I said, you know, maybe that's going to give him confidence to get one later. And sure enough, that was a big kick for us that that in that part of the ball game. So Absol proud of all day. Absolutely was, and the, the <clears throat> conditions Friday night were awful. I, Matt and Matt and I were talking about it all night. We knew there was a chance for rain, but it it felt like that mist just sat over the stadium all night. So to to make that kick in those conditions, we saw Sammy have. A couple of issues on that first drive, uh, you know, holding on to the ball too. So, how how can you prepare for for weather like that? Well, I don't know if you ever really can. You know, you yeah. can work wet balls and dump them in in water and, and get out there. You know, if it missed during the practice, as long as it's not thunder and lightning, we're going to stay out there, stay out there in it. So, you hopefully get some of those opportunities to to work some of that stuff. And then, you know, we work ball security every day. You know, so we don't expect that to be an issue just because you know we're going to emphasize that and and that's that's key. So. Um, you know, those things are hopefully carry over when, it, when the weather does get bad. Well, Coach, let's go ahead and move along and talk about the Black Shirt Awards, offense, defense, special teams, and scout. I know that's one of the things we really enjoy talking about on this show each and every week. And, of course, people, as we switch the camera over to you, they get to see the Black Shirt on the wall there. We've had right. that for a few weeks and get a lot of compliments on that. It's right. nice to have that. It's good decoration. especially since I think, I think Matt's ready to get a tattoo. <laughs> that's right. Hey, man, I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right, uh, so tell us about the Black Shirt Awards this week, Coach. All right, Black Shirts this week for offense. <clears throat> uh, this kid, he's kind of an all-do-everything for us, and I wish he was about a sophomore instead of a senior. But, you know, I tell him all the time, I said, I said Timmy, I, I wish I had about 10, 10 more just like you, but Timmy Smith gets the offensive black shirt. And really this week I told the team, I said, Timmy could have got the offensive black shirt, he could have got the defensive black shirt or the special teams black shirt. On the on kick returns, you know, he, he very rarely misses a, misses a block. You know, he gets down there and he's, he's in on just about – every tackle on kickoff and then you know so and then offense he ran good routes he blocked really well uh when he was out there so timmy smith got the offensive black shirt uh defense talon shirey got the defensive black shirt i thought he played his position the, the best with inside the the game plan uh, and then had some production there on, on some of the plays that came his way um then uh, special teams aiden davis he had three tackles on kickoff and, and then he had three good blocks on on kickoff return so Aiden Davis, who's been really productive for us, and he's another senior uh, DB that, that that that's really stood out this year and just makes plays in all facets of the game. Um, scout offense, uh, sophomore lineman Harrison Inman. Um, 
Uh, Harrison's a big, tall kid. He's about six two. He's I think he's still growing. He's still got uh, a lot of potential. You know, he's getting stronger in the weight room. He's getting more flexible. But he's just he's one hundred percent one of those kids that are Darlington kids that just love the program. They're just one hundred percent bought in. That want to do anything he can to help the team. And so Harrison Emmon, he's he's been sneaking up on getting the, getting a black shirt. But he finally earned the black shirt last for this past week. And then on defense, uh, freshman cornerback Brooke Temple. You know, I think uh, this is the, maybe the second time he's got voted as the black shirt, but Brooke just works his tail off. He's a fast as all get out. He's going to be a good player. He's just about, about a year away. He's going to get a little, little stronger in the weight room, a little bigger. But uh, he gives us all kinds of fits. You know, he, he, he covers talent pretty well, um, you know, at practice, you know, Monday through, through Thursday. And so I think he's going to end up being a, a good player. He's just not quite good enough to get in the starting lineup yet. Excellent. So uh, we we know Bill pretty well. He was talking to us at halftime, so I'm sure he's he's proud of his boy for earning the black shirt. Uh, any any other players that uh, that have had a particularly good week of practice this week that we can expect to see uh, see on Thursday night? You know, a couple of young, younger guys. You know, and I've mentioned these guys before. Bodie Powers. You know, he's always just knocking on the door of getting out there and and kind of starting to make a name for himself. And then Stuart Grigsby. You see him making some tackles on special teams and on on punts and kickoffs. Uh, but he's a really strong, fast kid that's really aggressive, and he's a hitter. Um, and so, you know, they're they're both of those guys are kind of right on the door, knocking on the door to be able to get a little more action. Um, but uh, you know, it, you know, hopefully we're going to get some of these injuries back. You know, what a lot of people don't realize, and I'm never one to make excuses, and so I don't go around celebrating it. But you know, we had five starters out against Pepperell. You know, Demarion Floyd's out, our best running back; Sam Wooten, our best linebacker; Evan Parton, who starts on the offensive and defensive line; Hendricks Jones, who's a starting wide receiver, and he can play some DB too. Um, so, you know, we're going to get a couple of those guys back. We're not fully healthy yet. And so, you know, once we do, we, we can have a really good, really good football team, but we need to get some guys healthy. So it's, it's been a real struggle this year. There's not been one game we played where we've had 100% all of our starters playing. And so you know, we're in week nine now. So, you know, we're running out of time, but, you know, sometimes that's the hands you're dealt and we're, we're just making the best of it. And we just kind of got the next man up mentality. And so that's how we got to do it. And, and coach, I know you, you've approached it this way with your team. We talked about it before we went on the air, but uh, you still have a lot of your goals right in front of you. Technically, uh, still in the running for a region championship. Pepperell has to play Trine, Dade County, two really good football teams, and you you have two good teams ahead of you. But if the Tigers take care of their business and, and things bounce the right way, feels well, like all those goals are that, still there. That's what I told the kids. You know, there's still a lot to play for, a lot of good football. You know, you win this week against our Murchies, and we can set up a, a big ball game against Trine in, in week 10, and we've got a week off to two kind of two weeks to prepare for that. So advantage the Tigers. You know, so maybe we can force a three-way tie situation. We'll see what happens with Pepperell and Trine this week. We'll actually get a chance to go up and scout those guys and watch the game live and in person instead of just getting the film. So, again, that's the advantage of Darlington. But we've got to take care of business tomorrow night first. Absolutely. Well, that's going to conclude our first segment. We're going to take a break. and we come back, our second segment, as always, the getting to know coach segment. And we've got what I think is a fun topic. Ian picked the topic for this week. Uh, but we're going to be talking about Halloween because there'll be a bye week right before, so this will be the last game and show that takes place before Halloween takes place. We'll talk about that in a little bit because it is the season for that. That's right. So we'll go ahead and take a break. This is the Coach Grove Show on the WLAQ YouTube channel and also Facebook Live feed. Let's hear a word from our sponsor, and we be, we'll be back with the coach here momentarily. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. <laughs> See there, I can do it. I didn't dance to the song that time. It was hard though. I could, I, yeah, you were having <laughs> to fight really it. Hold it back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is the Coach Grove Show, and Ian, uh, you came up with today's question. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got a. It's the holiday season. Kind of kicks off with uh, with Halloween, and I know you've got a young one at home. Um, and and just kind of wanted to ask you uh, some of your favorite Halloween traditions, and then and spin off from there see what see what your little girl's gonna dress up as this year all right so 
when we moved back to Rome eight years ago, we, we bought a house and, and we're, we're over and we have a neighborhood that's really kind of a hot spot for, uh, for, for Halloween. And so we've kind of started a tradition with our family. You know, my, my parents are still in town and, and Jess's parents are still in town. So, so er, we have the whole family come over and we have all the, all the, all our parents and grandparents have to bring the grand grandkids. And so, uh, Jess's mom makes a big pot of chili. We make hot dogs and my, Dad, my stepmom makes excellent slaw, believe it or not. She, she's a great cook. But anyway, she, she brings slaw. So we have chili and slaw dogs at the house. Um, and so we set up shop right there on, on the front porch, and, and we give out tons of candy. And, of course, you know, the highlight is, is taking Grayson uh, trick-or-treating because, you know, last year it was – you know, it was really good. This year is going to be it's going to be big time for her because she really understands what's going on now. And you know she's got her Lightning McQueen outfit. Okay, she's, she likes to go fast. All right, know, so good Lightning child. McQueen. Yeah, so <laughs> she's got a Lightning McQueen outfit. So she's going to be ready to go and 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 run up and down the roads and get as much candy as possible. I'm sure. <laughs> Awesome. That, that that's going to be a lot of fun, and and those traditions mean a lot. When you were a kid, what was what was the best costume you ever wore, and what are some of the things you remember about trick or treating? And dude, I had a Rambo, a Rambo three <laughs> first. Nice. Uh, I told, uh, I knew we were going to get some eighties pop culture. And, and yeah. you probably you probably seen the little kit. I mean, it came with the the Bowie knife. It came with the the band. Um, of course, I had the the cargo camos already. You know, and boots. So it didn't take much. Black cut off. I was, you know, ready to get John Rambo. Nice, nice. That's <laughs> awesome. What about uh, you, man? Oh, I mean, I, I went to the I went to the pirate uh, cove way too many times when I was young. I don't know how that that, that ended up happening, but uh, I was a California raisin one year, and that was uh, my <laughs> thanks thanks to my sister and mom for putting that thing together because it was a monstrosity. But uh, it was a hit at the East Central uh, Halloween parade. <laughs> I guess I would have leaned more towards the Star Wars side of things. Yeah. I think one year I was Darth Vader. I'm sure I was Luke Skywalker a time or another. But uh, Never Eddie Van Halen? I never did the Van Halen okay. thing. But I will say this. I was a punk rocker and did my hair like green or something like that, and earrings and things of that nature one time. So I did go the rock and roll route at one <laughs> point or another. But uh, another follow-up question to that, as far as like any scary movies or anything like that, are there any that, you know, that you remember liking a lot? But Yeah, well, you know, the ha the Halloween movies, the, the original, the first Halloween, we seem to always watch that, you know, Saw, we, we watch the original Saw over Halloween and, uh, uh, you know, the Scream movies. Uh, Jess really likes the Scream movies, so we'll watch the Scream movies during Halloween. And then she's... You know, I think most like most women, she's a Hocus Pocus fan. Okay, yeah. so the yeah. sequel was a big deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So okay. that'll be played. We'll hit all those. Uh, to me, the the scariest movie uh, of uh, growing up was the Poltergeist movies. Yeah, and Kane, that character in particular, because mm -hmm. I can like if I think about that dude singing that song, you know, and everything, uh, just the way he looked and all that kind of thing, it just makes me nervous now to think about it. But <laughs> it really freaky. scared me when I was a kid. Heck yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mine were the, the Halloween movies. I, I I was talking to somebody about it last night. I I will still have a Michael Myers nightmare on occasion. <laughs> Wake up and be like, man, I'm in my forties and they're, they're still still haunting my dreams. Um, so to, to shift gears a little bit more, can't, let's talk candy. What? What are your favorites, and what what got thrown away and bartered <laughs> bartered to other kids? Well, you know, Snicker, Snickers, obviously, um, Jolly Ranchers. Uh, I'm a sweet tarts guy. Um, you know, blow pop. You know, just old school bubble gum. You know, that's what I. That's if I can get those, that's pretty good. What about you, Matt? I'm more of like a gummies kind of person. Like I'd be the one that would get everybody's dots because it seems like people don't like <laughs> dots a whole lot, and I love that kind of stuff. But uh, that, that's what I'd go for mostly. One of the ones I don't really get is a lot of people like the candy corn stuff. But uh, I don't hate it, but I don't really like it. So yeah. I just don't – that one I just don't understand what the appeal is. Yeah. But, I don't know. Our, our O-line coach at, at Rome, and now he's the O-line coach at Calhoun, Barry Hall, he is a Brock's candy corn connoisseur. Really? Like I'm talking about like one, around this time of year, it's like two or three bags a gas station a night. And he's going to – but it, it's got to be yeah. Brock's, though. I'm yeah, like, you can't go generic. My my daughter's favorite are the the candy corns. I could, she she yeah, loves them. You, I could share less on candy corn. Uh, I just ain't. I was all, I was always a sucker for chocolate. The ones that I wanted <laughs> to get rid of were the generic, like the the candy that was just in a gold or a black wrapper or something. And I was like, I don't even know what this is. Just take it. <laughs> Trade me your chocolate. Gotcha. So. 
Yeah, well, uh, we talked a little bit of Halloween, and the next segment is going to be spent talking about the game coming up Thursday Night Lights taking place at Chris Hunter Stadium. It's also homecoming, so really looking forward to that. And we'll jump into the matchup when we come back, but we're going to take a break. This is the Coach Grove Show on the WLAQ YouTube channel or Facebook Live. And those that you are watching right now live, we appreciate you being with us. And uh, we'll be back with the coach in just moments. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Wellburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. You got to admit, it's a pretty cool song, you know? Well, we're going to go ahead and jump back into our conversation with Coach Groves as we get ready for a big game coming up against Saul Murchie. And, Coach, I've seen a lot of coaches from around the area uh, quoted in the newspaper in different places talking about this Saul Murchie team being one of the toughest that they've seen in a long time. So tell us a little bit about this team and, uh, you know, and if you've seen film on this team from previous years, maybe what's the difference about this team as compared to some other years and, and what sticks out about them? Well, I have not seen previous year film, okay. um, but what I have seen this year is they are a physical football team, and they are a run run based offense first. Then we got them around seventy eight percent run, twenty two percent pass. But you'll see they, the running backs run hard. They run the the quarterback is a big part of their running game. They p play with a tight end all the time, and uh, they're very they're very physical up front. And so that's the first thing that stands out, and that's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge, and we're going to have to we have to match that, and even more if we're going to be successful. Yeah, this is uh, an emerging team that's still in playoff contention, a lot to play for. You know, you know you're getting everybody's best shot for sure. Um, so they're going to come to Chris Hunter Stadium ready to play. Uh, you know, and, and you mentioned their quarterback. He's been a starter now for, I think, three years there. So you've got an experienced guy under center. So how do you prepare for him? Well, you know, you, you just got to go back to your, your fundamentals, your, your individual. You know, if we handle that, that handles all aspects, whether it's the quarterback powers or the running back counters or powers or the quarterback – uh, power plays or, or quarterback counters, um, our reads and our and what the kids have been taught handle all that. We just got to do exactly what we've been coached to do and do it at a high level and do it at a, and do it physical and 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 it'll take care of itself. And coach, you know, one of the things we like to do in this segment is kind of get to know you know the opposing team as much as possible. So as far as watching film and everything, who are some of the playmakers from this team that that you guys have been looking at on film? All right, on offense, you know, it starts with quarterback number 13, Luke Lively, who's a uh, 5'10", 155 junior. You know, he he's really uh, in charge of that offense. You know, he knows exactly what he's doing. He runs the ball really hard, and he's very efficient when they do ask him to throw the ball. Um, running back number three, Jackson Con Coonley, 6'1", 205 senior. He is very physical, runs the ball very hard. And so you got to hit him low. you got to wrap up, and you got to run your feet. And then we've got a gang tackle if, if, if we're going to um, make him – slowing down. Um, you're going to see a couple of tight ends, number 25, Hagen Terry, who does a good job. And there's a number 80 out there that comes out there and plays. Uh, two receivers, wide receiver number nine, Jacob Seagraves, who uh, actually used to used to play at Rome when I was when I was at Rome. He was there, um, and then he ends up transferring to to Armurchie. But he's a very tall, long, lanky kid, six two, one seventy, and he can run. And he's a, he's a really good athlete. So, you know, they take some deep ball shots with him. They use him on jet sweeps at times, and so you got to kind of account for him. And then they got another wide receiver, number eight, Blaine Raglan, who's a, who's a junior, good little scrappy wide receiver that that blocks well and runs good routes. So. So they've got playmakers on offense, and, and they got a physical offensive line. So they pose problems. And, Coach, uh, to, tomorrow night is homecoming. Uh, oddly, it'll be on Thursday and not on a Friday. So what? Uh, how, how does that change uh, the night? You got any players that are on the homecoming court that are going to have to pop out there and lock arms with somebody? No, Darlington doesn't do a homecoming court. It's, really? It's my, that's one of the things I ask, and nobody ever said anything about it. So I don't think Darlington does a homecoming okay. court. Okay. So – you know, no, no worries there. All right. You know, just like any coach, you know, you worry about distractions during homecoming week and and all that, and and dances, and them being more, you know, worried about that than they are the game. Believe me. So that's been an emphasis in our in our team meetings and our talks. You know, we got to understand that. You know, 
we're going to get everybody's best. You know, we talked about motivation this week. We're going to get everybody's best. When you put that purple on, you know, you've you got a target on your back. And so when you lift your weights, when you prepare, when we practice, you got you got to use that as motivation. And so, you know, we're going to get everybody's best every week. Our merch is going to be no different. You know, they're battling for a playoff spot. They're battling, uh, you know, for, for a home field playoff game just like we are. And so, you know, we've got to, we've got to be ready. And we've had a good week of practice. And I want to see our boys go out there and, and, and really cut it loose and have fun and, and play tiger football and you, you mentioned that potential home playoff game this will be the last home game of the regular season expect a big crowd since it is homecoming um but uh how much extra motivation is that for your seniors uh, i know we talked about that uh, before we went on the air well that, that again that's a monday conversation you know sunday night i i wake up two o'clock in the morning and I, I thought if we don't win this game you know it's going to be the last time the seniors get to play at chris hunter stadium so you know, that's motivation. That's, again, a part of our team meeting. You know, we want to honor these seniors, and we want to keep playing and keep this thing rolling. And so, obviously, it's going to motivate them. But let's motivate these young guys that still have a role, too, that let's, let's make sure that gets delivered to these seniors. So, you know, we keep that 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 hope alive, and we want to get a, a good draw for the playoffs. So that home playoff game is important. So it's been a point of emphasis. And for, from our standpoint of watching this region for a long time, I don't remember a time in recent memory where it's been this strong from top to bottom with you guys and Pepperell and Dade County as good as they are and our Murchie and, uh, and Trine and all these teams. So this is a, one of those regions where you've got to be ready to go every single week. And I know that's something you guys, as you talked about, put a tremendous amount of emphasis on. Um, but has that been something that when you look at, at, at this region this year, um, that has the competitive nature from week to week been any kind of surprise or is that what everybody kind of expected coming into the year? You know, I really didn't know what to, what to expect when, you, you know, you, you drop down coaching from big classifications to now. What I, what I do know is there's good players out there, you know, and there's there's good coaches out there. And so, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, it's a region game. It's important, you know, and it doesn't matter who you're playing. This is Georgia high school football, which I would argue that, you know, in the NFL statistics will say per capita we put more – players in the NFL than anybody else. So you're not getting a break. And there's good coaches. There's good coaches coming in from all over the country to coach in Georgia because the people put so much into it, you know, facility-wise and pay-wise and all that. And so, you know, you're not getting a break. You better be ready every week, and you better treat it like it's a Super Bowl because, believe me, they're treating you like a Super Bowl. And to backtrack just a little bit, we got to talk about our Murchie's offense and, and kind of their scheme on that side of the ball. But tell us what you expect from their defense. All right, defense, they play an odd front, 3-4. You're going to see cover two and cover three. Uh, they're going to slant. They're going to move their front. They're going to blitz and try to use their speed uh, to, to, to wreak some havoc. Um, some players that stand out in his defensive end, 44, Rylan Steen. He's 6'1", 205, senior. He plays really hard and he's really physical. Linebacker number 42, Jackson Hightower, who's a junior. Uh, linebacker 21, Matthew Hapson is a senior. And then you got Jacob Seagraves, uh, play, who plays corner and plays some. And, and then you got number 14, uh, Easton Jackson, who's a, who's a good little DB, who's hard nosed and plays, plays really well. Awesome. Um, any final thoughts? We got about a minute or two left uh, that you'd like to offer the audience tonight as we get ready, ready to wind down. I say, you know, I think it's, it's going to be a huge uh, atmosphere. Uh, obviously, it's a huge ball game for us. You know, we, we want to stay our live at the region championship run. You know, we want to get a home playoff game. We want to extend the, the time the seniors can play at Chris Hunter Stadium at least one more time. And so, you know, there's going to be a big crowd. You know, I think uh, I think a lot of the county schools, city schools who are playing on Friday, I think they're going to come over and, and see our game. And so there's going to be a lot of eyes on the Tigers. So there's a lot of opportunities for us to show off what, what the Darlington Tigers football program is all about you know show off how hard we play and, and and how hard we execute and so hope it's going to be a great night I know we're going to play hard and we're going to play for the Darlington community and so we need you out there to support us at 7 30. We don't get to say it too often but there ain't nothing like a tiger on a Thursday, Thursday night. night. That's right <laughs> and we will be there and very excited to be there in the booth at Chris Hunter Stadium. If you can't make it to the game of course we'll have coverage for you right here on WLAQ and of course Darlington School provides a great video stream produced by Northwest Georgia Media and we just want to take the opportunity to thank you coach and everybody involved at Darlington that allows us to come out with the radio station and cover the games because it's a real pleasure each and every week and uh, something I know that, that we really look forward to. So thank you very much. We appreciate you, man. Sure, yeah. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, that's going to put a wrap on the show for today. And with that said, go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. And we appreciate everybody tuning in for this episode 
of the Coach Grove Show on the WLAQ YouTube channel and Facebook Live. If you haven't done so already, we would invite you to smash the subscribe button so you can get Ian taught me that. Evidently for a while, that's what the young kids said about it or Still whatever. Is. And Still I'm just sticking with it. So I probably just look like the square old man that I am, but uh, I'll stick with that. But uh, anyway, subscribe to our channel, like us, follow us, all that kind of good stuff, and, and we appreciate you doing that. But we'll go ahead and wrap things up. This has been the Coach Grove Show, and hope you have a great, great uh, rest of your week, everybody. And the game is Thursday night. We'll go ahead and remind you about that, 7.30, Toe Meets Leather. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of the Coach Groves Show. We invite you to join us again next week as we discuss all things Darlington football with head coach Wayne Groves. Go Tigers!
Welcome back live. We're at the lakeside tonight as we get ready for Darlington football right here on WLAQ and also the Darlington School YouTube channel. Back at Chris Hunter Stadium, big Region 7A, uh, Region 7A Division 1, I almost said 7A private uh, showdown between the Darlington Tigers and the Almerchi Indians. And Ian. Ain't nothing like a tiger on a... Thursday, Thursday night. night. That's right. A little Thursday night lights for you, which is kind of strange. Although we did have this scenario, I believe, one time last yeah. year. So, and it's been one of those things that's been happening because of the official shortage. It looks like we're about to have the uh, national anthem and also a prayer here. So I think what we'll go ahead and do is take a quick break. But the Darlington Tigers and the Almerichi Indians coming up here in about 15 minutes on WLAQ and also the live stream. Let's take a three-minute break. We'll be back. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Welburn family since 1974, that's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. Here, I am becoming who I want to be. Here, I am looking toward my future. Here, we learn from our failures so that we may soon succeed. Here, we're passionate about learning and trying new things every day. Here, we search for new perspectives and cultures so we can better understand the world. Because at Darlington, we know we're in the most trusted hands. As we discover new passions and learn more about ourselves through academics, athletics, fine arts, and service to our community. We show our versatility as we choose different pathways to our goals. This is our home. We embrace challenges and persevere, even when something seems impossible. We collaborate and create to take our place in the world. We know that together we can make an impact. This is our moment, our time. Graduates today, Darlington forever. Kusa Steel is a family-owned full-line steel service center located in Rome, Georgia. Since 1972, we've been working to make our customers more efficient by providing steel product supply and processing all in one place. We are proud to provide a large range of products, including hot rolled and cold finished steel, stainless steel, galvanized steel, aluminum, and alloys. Our capabilities enable us to assemble and process steel orders within days, shortening your lead time. Kusa Steel, steel for your project. At Northwest Georgia Media, we're all about capturing the moments that matter to you. From sports to arts, from concerts to business events, we're equipped to share what's happening in your world, live and in high definition. We leverage cutting edge technology and a knowledgeable crew to see that your most unforgettable events remain just that, unforgettable. Northwest Georgia Media, where the world is your audience. Welcome you back in. We are live at the lakeside tonight. Chris Hunter Stadium, Darlington Tigers getting ready to host the Armurchi Indians. Darlington Ian comes into the game five and three overall, three and one in region play. Meanwhile, the Armurchi Indians 
having a really good season, four and three. They are two and one in region play. Series history-wise, Darlington leads this series 19 and two. And when you look back at the, the history books of this one, it's kind of interesting. The only two wins for Armerchi in the series were back in 1992 and 1993. And that was during the Tommy Welch era, which was the most successful time in program history. And the 93 team, well, that was the one that made it to the semifinals and came up just a little bit short to Larry Campbell's Lincoln County team that year by a final score of 24 to 20, or, or who knows what the history would be that year. And uh, what an unbelievable team that was in the era back during the Tommy Welch era. Yeah, yeah, you know, the uh, a lot of the kids from West Rome ended up out at, at Armergy for a couple of years when the, uh, those two schools were, were folded up and Rome was created, and, and Armergy had a couple of great seasons, uh, almost a storybook ending there in 93. Oh, no doubt about it. And then you and I used to broadcast a lot of Armergy games back, I guess, from around 2007, 2009, somewhere in that area. And that was back when Coach Mullinax was there. And they had some really good teams during that time as well when they were running the triple option, a lot like Paul Johnson's yeah. offense that w he ran when he was at Georgia Tech. And uh, they made the playoffs for the last time during that period of time back in 2009. And they played Westminster that year and came up short in that game. But it, it was a special time for the program also. Yeah, no doubt about it. The Zach attack. I remember yeah. that. I remember that crew. And, and yeah, it was, it was Paul Johnson's offense, but they were a little more pass friendly as they had a couple of really good receivers out there Hayden Vaughn and uh, uh, Marshall Hudson Marshall was Hudson yeah, yeah yeah they were they were excellent man a lot of fun to watch yeah we had a great time calling those games back during that period of time last meeting between these two teams was in 2022 Darlington won the game at H.A. Lindsay Stadium final score was 45 to 7 but all of that to say uh, this is another good era it feels like starting for the Almerchi Indians coach Belou's done a fantastic job with this team this year and all the quotes and everything I've heard from coaches in the paper and other places have talked about, you know, this is one of the best all Murchie teams that they've ever had. So this is going to be a, another tough test coming up tonight here at Chris Hunter Stadium in, the, in a really strong region right now. Yeah, yeah, you've got a, a lot of upperclassmen here, a lot of experience on this R. Murchie team. And, uh, you know, they were they were just up against the Purple Dragons a few weeks ago. Uh, they, they, they turned the ball over a lot, and uh, otherwise they may have come out with a victory in that game as apparently it was a one-score game late before they – uh, you know, Pepper forced a fumble and returned it for a touchdown, winning that game 20-6. to six. So this is a capable Armerchi team that's hungry and fighting for a playoff spot. And you mentioned it. They haven't been in the playoffs since 2009. And, and that kind of that's – that's a big motivator. They're going to come in here and they, they're going to want this ball game bad and, and they're going to bring their A game. So the Tigers are going to have to be prepared. Uh, and fortunately for the Tigers, they're getting getting some guys back this week that they've been missing. Oh, no doubt about it. And, you know, last week it looked like we were in for a barn burner, potential photo finish uh, coming up as the Tigers and Dragons went back and forth in the first half. It was a three-point game uh, lead for the Dragons at halftime. But the second half was a different story, and the, the, the Dragons were able to pull away in that game and put it away and come up with the victory. And we had the Coach Grove Show last night on the WLAQ YouTube channel and Facebook uh, feed and you know coach said hey look you know because you had asked them about having a short week to prepare for a game like that and they were ready to, to move on from that game right away get to work and get ready for this game so I think they're grateful to have it on a Thursday just to get out there because when you lose a game obviously there's a bad taste in your mouth and you want to get it out as quick as possible yeah yeah he was uh you know I didn't know how how he would feel about the short week but he was he didn't hesitate did he, he no, immediately he was like man I'm real thankful that we had a short week because it, it, it motivated us to get right back to work move past this victory and look if you're a Darlington fan if you're a Darlington player everything's still in front of you no you don't control your own destiny per se but Pepperell has trying tomorrow night that's going to be a heck of a ball game uh they still have to play Dade County and then Darlington if they take care of business tonight they get a bye week and then they head up to try and so it could be a three-way tie. Who knows how this is all going to shake out uh, because this is a tough region, and Dade's capable of, of taking down the Dragons. The Dragons are capable of taking down Trine, and Darlington's capable of winning out as well. So who knows how this is going to unfold. But the most important thing is you take care of business tonight. Exactly. you got to keep the main thing the main thing, and the rest of that stuff will take care of itself. There's only one thing that you can do is focus on the present, get out there and play hard, and, and give yourself the best shot to win this game. And that's exactly what the Darlington Tigers are going to get out there and try to do tonight.
And so we're going to talk more about it as we go along throughout our pregame. Again, we welcome you into the broadcast, whether you're listening on the radio or watching on the live stream produced by Northwest Georgia Media and put out by uh, Darlington School and their YouTube channel. do want to take an opportunity here to recognize everybody as a part of the crew as we watch the captains about to make their way out onto the field. Press box cameras, you got Benton Potts and Thomas Patterson tonight. Directors Mike Garrett. Replay is Nathan Patterson. Graphics and stats, well, that's Scott Brownlow. He's sitting right to the to the left of us and then you got a drone pilot tonight austin wiggins is with the crew tonight so you'll be some seeing some aerial footage at times of the broadcast this evening and of course we don't want to leave out our buddy lynn butler who's back at the studio tonight he's going to be there two nights in a row because double duty we won't have the scoreboard show tonight because this is the only game so he's going to be back tomorrow night to bring you the rome orthopedic center high school football scoreboard show on the radio and with that said Along with me tonight is Ian Griffin, and I'm Matt Davis, and we'll bring you the play-by-play -play story of tonight's game. Yeah, we're excited, and you might have to listen to us tell some stories or talk talk uh, college football or something. We don't have scores to report tonight, and we're not going to tell you to stay tuned for the Rome Orthopedic Scoreboard Show after, after the game because this is our only game tonight. But tomorrow night, we hope that you'll call in. Maybe me and Matt will be uh, uh, available to make some phone calls tomorrow. We won't be – calling a game That's exactly right yeah, i'm trying to drag him up to trying with me it looks like we're probably going to do that i got to make sure you know everything's good and, and can make it up there but I'm, I'm thinking about heading up there with you so we'll give him a call and give him our take on that game coming up tomorrow as well heck yeah all right man we're going to go ahead and take another three minute timeout a three minute timeout down the line when we come back we'll have the coin toss for you we'll give you the captains and all that good stuff and we'll get ready for some thursday night football right here on wlaq and the live stream Yes, sir. We'll be back in three minutes. Darlington Armerchi coming up. At Rome Orthopedic Center, we salute students, freshmen and seniors, athletes and artists, first stringers and choral singers, band majors and game changers. We hope you never need orthopedic care, but if you do, choose the only practice in the Rome area solely dedicated to the orthopedic needs of the students and families in our community. Rome Orthopedic Center. To make an appointment, Call 706-292-0040.
We're back live at Darlington School as we get ready for Darlington and Almerchie to lock horns here shortly. Darlington won the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Here are your captains for tonight. We'll start with the visiting Almerchie Indians. Their quarterback, Luke Lively, num Lively, number 13, number 25, Hagen Terry. I heard a lot of good things about him at that tight end position. Number 42, Jackson Hightower, one of their best linebackers. And number, actually, no, C.J. Collins, number 55, and number 58, Tristan Young. I was looking at some of the players that I had circled in the conversation we have with Coach Groves and, and not the captains there. But now we'll move on to the Darlington Tigers. Tonight your captains were Talon Shirey, also McKay Rush, Jack Chandler, and Marion Floyd. Looks like he's going to be back in the lineup tonight, Ian. Yeah, he was missed last week. Both uh, both he and uh, Sam Wooten. Sam Wooten's been out since that uh, big fourth down play he made against Dade County. So uh, that's the, the quarterback of the defense and, uh, and a pretty, pretty darn good tight end, too. He's made some big plays on both sides of the ball. So the Tigers are glad to have him back. And here come the Tigers. Speaking of the Tigers, and it looks like Sammy Koncheski was out there uh, leading the charge. They did a nice little move uh, as they jumped up and gave each other a hand as they came out. So uh, we'll see. We had heard that he was a little bit banged up coming into this game, but I'm pretty sure I saw number two coming out of there. Yeah, but, we'll, uh, see. we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if he gets out there. We, we were expecting to see uh, Luke Parker uh, take the snaps, but he's got his pads on and is ready to roll. So we'll see if he rolls out there. And the, and the Tigers kind of took off with the inflatable Tiger. Did you see that, Matt? I did not yeah, see that, man. Yeah. I turned my head watching yeah. him come down the sidelines, and I missed that part. I, I guess Jason Payne's got his Thursday game on right now. He's not, he's <laughs> not, he's not, not ready for prime, prime time Thursday football here because the, the Tiger got away from him. I'm going to give him a hard time. Well, I tell you what, it, I, I know you, you mentioned the same thing earlier, but it's been a strange day getting prepared for this, and I've had this sinking feeling all day that I was forgetting to do something because my workload's different on a Thursday than it is on a Friday and everything's you know switched around so it did feel a little bit strange but now it feels just about right because we're about to have some football we're at Chris Hunter Stadium to Chukwu Obioha is going to kick it away here for the Tigers and we're going to get this thing underway 12 minutes on the clock get ready for some Thursday night lights right here on WLAQ and also the live stream provided by Darlington School produced by Northwest Georgia Media it is toe meeting leather end over end that drops in it'll be fielded and brought out by Raglan and he is going to be dropped inside the 20 at about the 15 they got down there and hurt didn't they? Yeah, Miles Twyman was a, an absolute locked-in missile on that tackle. Uh, just gunning for him the whole time. Didn't give him a chance to go anywhere. That was uh, Blaine Raglan on the return, and the R. Murchie Indians will start at their own 20-yard line for their first drive. So the Tigers are going to start this game on defense. Here come the Indians out on offense. Their quarterback is Luke Lively. Been hearing a lot of good things about that young man this season. They're going to send two wide receivers, one on the each side of this formation, and they will line up in a shotgun. Oh, no, he's going to be under center here for this first down. They'll line up in a power set. Lively takes the snap. He turns. They're going to hand off, run the football, find a good seam, and they gash the Tigers for about nine yards on the first play with Jackson Cooley, who is one of their best running backs. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, immediately Ooh. the eyeball test here. This is a big R. Murchie team. They got more than I thought. He oh, got about first 11 down. yards. Yeah, 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 absolutely, man. That's the first down. For, uh, for the Indians. So Cooley with an 11-yard run, and that's a first down. The Indians have moved the chains on the first play of the ball game. Just a little power run there between the tackles. We know they like to run the football. So, so they will line up this time. It looks like in a shotgun formation, Lively working right to left. He's going to run the football, something he likes to do often. He finds a little room on the edge and gets about two yards there on that first down play, maybe three. About four. About four, actually. Uh, Matt. Yeah, yeah. That, so right now, our Murchie uh, winning, winning the battle up front. And Luke Lively has, has a lot of experience back there for the Indians. And this program, it's been a slow build. And, of course, they, are, they do have a new coach this season. But, but the, this rebuild that they've been under was taking place under Coach Green as well. Uh, and, and they've really come a long way. And taking over for, I believe, Chandler DeSanto, who we called his yeah. name at that quarterback position there for a little while. But shotgun formation, you're going to have a couple of receivers on the far side. Lively rolls out to the right, throws a screen pass, and connects with his receiver. That's Jacob Seagraves. It's another first down, and their offense is clicking right out of the gate again. Yeah, three plays, two first downs already. And a lot of times your, your offensive coordinator will script this first drive, and it looks like they are absolutely on schedule. 
uh, here early in this ball game. So the ball is now at the 49 yard line as the Indians threaten to move into Tiger territory after picking up a couple of first downs to start the ball game. Just underway here at the lakeside tonight, Darlington and Almerchie and a pivotal Region 7A Division I showdown tonight for you on a Thursday evening. Shotgun formation, Lively is gonna look off to the sidelines. He'll send a couple of receivers to the far side of the formation. He's gonna turn, hand it off, and they will try to run it up the middle. Good defense, clogging things up up the middle there and not letting them have anything. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't see who was on the tackle. I'm going to try to catch it on the replay here. And it was McKay Rush and Jack Chandler and Sam Wooten coming in to clean up behind them. But for the first time tonight, the Tigers met uh, the Indians there at the line of scrimmage and drove them back for a short loss. Great to see Sam Wooten back in the lineup tonight. We hadn't had his services for several weeks, and I bet it feels good for him to, yeah. to be out there with his buddies again playing some football. Well, he put his body on the line to help him win that game when he was injured. Lively under center. He's going to hand the football off, and I think it ended up on the turf, yeah, Ian. Yeah, and the yeah, Tigers yeah. say they have it, and it looks like it's going to be a turnover, one of the issues that we talked yes, about sir. in the pregame that Almerchi has had this season. So that's a big turn of events. And, yeah, Matt, they turned it over five times against Pepperell, a game they were in late, but the turnovers just killed them, and it was just a bad exchange, not a, not a, a forced fumble there. Uh, but Lively handed that off, I think, to Hayden Phillips was the ball carrier there, and it just never uh, – he never got it – got the handoff secured. I was going to see if who we could figure out it. who recovered that. Let's when see. they get up from the pile, I never saw the ball. I didn't either. McK oh, it was McKay Rush. Okay, McKay Rush. Yes. Good deal. Well, Tigers offense out on the field, and it does look like we're going to see Parker at quarterback here. He is going to – nope, that's yeah. – he's going to run the football, spins around at the end of the play and gets eight yards. That was Luke Parker. Good and, run. And, you know, Luke's like, hey, boys, I can run the rock too. I can run the rock. Keeps it on the read option on the first play for the Darlington offense tonight and picks up some good yardage. Indeed he did. So the Tigers will line up shotgun formation, three wide set. This time he's going to hand the ball to Marion Floyd, tries to dive forward at the end of the play, got close, but I think he's going to be short just a little bit of the first down. Yeah, based on that spot from the official on the far side of the field, they're going to be about a yard short, so good defense there uh, by the Indians. Marion's a hard one to bring down. Indeed he is. So that's going to bring up third and one here for the Tigers with nine minutes left to go in the first quarter. And no score. This is the first possession of the game for the Tigers. They'll send two wide to the near side. Shotgun formation. Floyd in the backfield with Parker, who turns, hands it off, and they run up the middle, get the yard they need, and then some. A lid comes off of one of the Almerchi players. The chains are moving. You get about six yards there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So the Tigers advance the ball to the 35-yard line in Armerchi territory. Armerchi got two first downs on the opening possession of the game and then fumbled the ball. That's how the Tigers have it, and they got the ball at their own 49 to start this drive. So a uh, great field position, obviously, to start the drive. Two wide receivers on the far side, one on the near here for the Tigers. You're going to have Floyd in the backfield. They're going to pitch to him, and he is going to run off to the sidelines and pick up four or five yards. Nice carry there. Just a little pitch play from that shotgun formation. And Floyd's one of those runners. You can you can bottle him up for a little while, but eventually he's going to find a crease. And if he does, look out. Yeah, you better hope you catch him before he gets to that second level. Yeah. Three wide receivers to the near side. This is bringing up second down and seven for the Tigers. There's the snap, gonna throw a screen pass and it's gonna go to Talon Shirey. He breaks free, stays up. He's inside the 20, the 10, five, dives towards the pylon. Haven't seen the signal yet. They're gonna rule him out. And they're gonna short. rule him out a little bit short. What a great play. That's Parker's first pass attempt and it's complete. And what was that for, Matt? About 31 yards, where do they rule him out? About the three yard line, so about 28 yard. Reception there for Talon Shirey. So that sets up a first and goal here from the one yard line. Here's the snap to Parker and a whistle and a flag comes in and the play is blown dead. Yeah, Murchie jumped. So that'll be half the distance to the goal. So, so a half a yard? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Well, they do say it's a game of inches, so, you know. That's true. Every little bit helps getting it you does. closer. It does. And uh, Jaron Payne coming out in this formation. So, Aiden Davis, and you're going to have Talon Shirey split wide to the right. Floyd in the backfield here with Luke Parker, who's the starting quarterback tonight. And here's the snap to Parker. They he turns. Again. Yep. Another half yard, <laughs> or not even. I guess half the distance from the half yard, so a quarter yard. <laughs> so, Emergy has two penalties, and it hasn't netted a yard yet. How about that? Kind of an interesting scenario, that's for a, sure. That's an interesting stat. High school football for you tonight on WLAQ and also the live stream. Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game coming up after tonight's action, but not the scoreboard show. That'll be tomorrow night. Here's the snap to Parker. Turns, hands it off, and Floyd scoots into the end zone. A one-yard plunge for a touchdown, and the Tigers are on top. They get the first points on the board. Yes, they do, Matt. A 50-yard drive there for the Tigers. Uh, it was six plays, 50 yards, and Demarion Floyd was met with little resistance there from the quarter yard line as uh, Darlington pops that in and takes an early lead. And that's got to feel good for them coming off of the loss last week to go out and, and get uh, the first score of this game. Here comes the point after attempt, and that one is going to be through. That was to Chuku Obioha. Yeah. And it's 7 to 0. So they convert there. And Darlington has the lead early, 7 to nothing, in front of this home crowd on homecoming, Matt. That's right, homecoming night. Of course, you'll have, I suppose, the homecoming presentation coming up at halftime. We got some notes on that that we'll try to share some with you as we also do our normal halftime show. It'll be a little, little bit different here tonight since we don't have any other games going on around the area to talk about scores. But we got plenty to talk about, no doubt about that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's time to start talking about how this playoff picture could unfold. One of the things that we talked uh, with, with Coach Groves about last night on the show was that the seniors, this could be their last game at Chris Hunter Stadium. And that's not totally in their control, but if they can win out, they should have a, a home game in the playoffs. That's very true. Yeah, they will if yeah. they win out, yeah. absolutely. Obi Oha going to kick it away here for the Tigers. Going to have three men back. One in the middle is Jacob Seagraves. Also, you got Easton Jackson back there. And here comes the kick. It's going to be end over end. Drops in at about the 20. They'll field it. Get it out to the 25. Cuts it up midfield. Ooh. And he is going to pay and be brought down at around wow. the 21-yard line. Got spun around there. Yeah, well, we're going to have to change Miles Twine. We're going to have to give him a nickname, Heat Seeker. <laughs> because he has dialed in, man. That was another big hit from the sophomore. And it was Blaine Raglan again fielding that kickoff. And this time he gets out to about the 21 yard line. Our Murchie on their first drive, Matt, they, uh, they ran five plays. Most of them were successful. Darlington was able to stop them uh, for a loss on first down and then they fumbled on second down out near midfield. So uh, we'll see what they can do with their second drive. First and 10 from the 21, working right to left. They're going to send three wide receivers to the near side. Quarterback's going to run it the other way, and he finds some room to run on the edge and picks up about four or five yards. A good positive play for Almerchie to open the drive. Yeah, yeah, almost five yards there for Lively on the quarterback power. And this is a big Almerchie team. I mean, I, I have to say, that's one of the things that stood out to me when they, they came out on the field. They've got some size, which is something they've lacked uh, during these uh, this 13-year playoff drought. Lively is going to line them up in a similar formation to the previous play where they ran it off to the right side. They're going to have three wide receivers here on the nurse near side. And Lively takes the snap. He's going to run it that way again, kind of cuts up towards the middle. He'll be dropped. May have I advanced the ball about a half a yard. Maybe. Let's see. That was Henry Ledbetter on the stop there, back in his original number 18, playing, playing defensive end. Was wearing number 67 for a while yeah. there. Been shifting some guys around. This is going to bring up third down and five, and the ball is going to be at the 27-yard line. Oh, Murchie's still on their side of the field. They're going to send two wide receivers to the near side this time. Lively takes the snap from the gun. He's going to hand the football off, gives it to Coonley, and he carries the pile wow. about three yards. That was a hard run right it, there. It was, not it's all going to depend on the spot here, Matt. It looked short to me. I think he's going to be about a yard or a half a yard short. They're moving. 
Oh, let's see. They're yeah, moving. Let's see. Now they're moving. They are moving yeah, the they're chains. Moving the chains. Interesting. Mm. All right, another first down for the Arm Murchie Indians. That one looked short to me. It did to me too, but it may be something to do with the angle. I'm not sure, but the nose, nose of the ball is right there at the 32. First and 10 for the Almerchi Indians, still on their side of the field. Under center is Lively. He'll take the snap. Turns, going to hand it off, and wrapped up and brought to the ground is going to be Coonley after a very short game. Uh, that was Sam Twenty on the tackle. He has got a nose for the football. That young man has been a wrecking crew all season. So the Tigers are going to come, or rather the Indians are going to come back to the line of scrimmage here with second and a long nine. Just under six minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Darlington was able to strike first blood here in this game and lead it seven to zero, capitalizing on an Almerchi turnover and a 50-yard drive. Shotgun formation. Here's the snap to Lively. He runs to the right side, tries to get some room, and he is clobbered and brought to the ground by Sam Wooten. Yeah, absolutely. And now you've got our Murchie in third and uncomfortable. They are not a passing team. I believe coach said they run 78% of the time when they've got the ball. So dropping back and, and trying to pick up yards through the air is not what they do uh, efficiently. So this is exactly where you want them if you're the Tigers. Third and nine here for the Almerchi Indians gonna send a wide receiver split to the far side. They also have one lineup in the slot on that side of the formation, working right to left, still on their side of the field. There's the snap, Lively drops back, looking to throw on this third down play. He's got company in the backfield, puts the ball in the air, and it's gonna be incomplete on the sidelines. And Almerchi will have to punt it away. Good coverage downfield, Lively dropped back. He had time. Uh, the Tigers only rushed their front four uh, instead of staying in the pocket, Lively bailed a little bit early on that one and had to make the throw on the run, and, and there was no chance for the receiver to catch that one. It was well out of bounds. So good defense from the Tigers, and now you have uh, a really dangerous return man standing back there at the 36-yard line waiting on this one. Talon Shower is a threat to take to the house every time. Ragland on to handle the punting duties. The junior here for the Sarmerchi team. Kick is on the way, and that one is going to go out of bounds. And I don't think he hit that one the way he intended to do, but obviously they were they were using the directional punt to keep it away from Talon Shirey. Uh, so you pick your poison there. That one went out of bounds at the 45, and the Tigers will have great field position once again on this drive. Their first drive started at the 50 after the recovered fumble, and uh, now they'll start at their own 45. So the Tigers set to trot their offense back in on the field, already leading this game seven to zero. And we never got to talk about keys to the game, but I think one of the ones in this game, obviously this all Murchie team comes into this game believing they've had a good season. I uh, feel like they got a pretty good shot to win. So the Tigers really got to strike hard in this game and build a big lead and uh, put some doubt in there. Two wide receivers to the near side, one on the far. There's the snap. Parker takes it, hands it off, and they try to run it up the middle. Not a lot of room to run there, so it'll be a, a very short gain, if anything, there. Who was that on the carry? Was that Floyd? It was Floyd, was. yes, sir. He's racking up the work. Good to see him back out there. That's already his fifth carry. No gain on that one. And, yeah, Matt, you mentioned starting fast. When you're playing a team that likes to run the football, if you can build a lead and take them out of their comfort zone, that's definitely uh, a major advantage. So the ball is at the 45-yard line. We get ready for the Tigers here. Shotgun formation, Floyd in the backfield. You're going to have four wide receivers. Man goes in motion, dropping back as Parker looking to throw. He's got company in the backfield, and he is going to throw this one away. Incomplete on the Almerchi sidelines. Yeah, smart play there by Parker. Uh, tried to buy a little time, but when he, he went back in the other direction, he had a few Indians bearing down on him, and he, he had a target in the area. Demar Demarion was over there, but uh, just threw that one away. Live to fight another down. We just got a text message a couple of moments ago from Logan Maddox. I hadn't talked to him in a while. He calls the Rome Braves game on their video feed and also works down at Jacksonville State last time I talked to him. How's Mr. Maddox doing? I think he's doing all right, enjoying the broadcast. We appreciate you, Logan. Good to hear from you. And there's the snap. Parker puts it in the air, and it looks like he caught it, it was but was close. he in bounds? We'll see what the official's call is, they're, they're and they're gonna, saying incomplete. Yeah, they ruled that one incomplete. That was Aiden Davis, right? I think it was yeah. Timmy Smith. Might have been. Let's see. Okay. Number 20. Watching it on the replay here. And Parker delivered. That one was a little high. And it 
Yeah, it was Timmy Smith, and his foot did not come down. So a good call there by the officials. And the Tigers go three and out, and we'll have to punt this one away. So we'll have one man back here for the Almerchi Indians. They will be working right to left as we get ready for the snap to Talon Shire, who will punt it away. Kind of a low snap, picks it up, gets the ball in the air, and that's going to take a nice Darlington bounce. It'll be fielded at the 16-yard line and brought out by Ragland, and he stays up. A little bit better return this time. He gets it out to about the 27-yard line before they haul him in. And that is where Almerchi will take over with their third possession of the half. And a good job there by Ragland to field that ball on a hop and uh, keep it from rolling back well inside their own red zone. And he was able to advance it about eight or nine yards as well. So, so the Tigers back out there on defense. We got 343 left to go in the first quarter. Darlington leads this one seven to zero after scoring on their first drive, getting the ball at the 50 yard line after an Almerchi fumble and drove it right down the field and punched it in for a one yard touchdown run by D-Man. A good start here, and Darlington will look to build on what they did on defense on that last Armerchi possession. Quarterback under center, Lively. He's going to turn, hand it off, and Ball's the ball out. comes out. Tigers are chasing it down. It's going to be picked up by Duggan. He'll run it the other way. He is running down the sidelines inside the 20, cuts back inside, now back outside, and gets inside the 10 before they haul him in. Disaster strikes again for the Almerchi Indians. Yeah. And let's see if the Tigers can cash in here, Ian. Yeah, the turnovers are... An absolute killer, especially on the road. And that time it was once again Hayden Phillips on the carry. He's a big fella. Put his shoulder down, and it was just a helmet on the ball, Matt, that popped that loose. Dug and scooped it up at the 41. Got out to the sideline and almost took that sucker to the house. Uh, he turned He turned into a running back real quick, didn't he, Matt? He really yeah, did. Yeah. So the Tigers are going to open this drive at the eight-yard line. First and goal, Tigers, after the fumble recovery that got him inside the 10, as you pointed out by Noah Duggan. Great heads-up play there. Three wide receivers to the near side. Parker's got him in the gun. Here's the snap. Turns, going to hand it off. A little bit of a delayed handoff, and not much doing on that play. And you got to cash this one in, Matt. You want six here. Make them pay for the turnover. Good defense there by our merchant. So far, they've done a pretty good job bottling up the running game. So that's going to bring up second and goal after no gain. So the ball remains at the eight-yard line. 3.04 left to go here in this opening quarter of football at the lakeside. Darlington leads at 7-0. to zero. And the Tigers go back to the line of scrimmage. This time, they're going to line up with Miles Twyman in the backfield with Luke Parker. Noah Duggan running out on the field here before they snap the ball. Ten seconds on the play clock. He'll get lined up at that H-back position. Here's the snap. Parker rolls, and there's going to be a flag. Uh, Two flags come in. Yeah, I don't think everybody got set, unfortunately, or is it too many men? Yeah, they were running. Yep, substitution infraction on Darlington. That's a big penalty there, Matt. You had a couple of guys running on late, and I just there was just some confusion as 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 to who was be on the field. That'll be frustrating for Coach Groves and his staff, but hopefully they can overcome it here on second down. So this will be second and goal from the 14-yard line after the penalty yards. Two wide receivers to the near side, one on the far. Davis is on the far side. You got Talon Shirey in the slot here on the near side, and you also have Jake Trebus out there. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off. Miles Twyman with a hard run. And he is going to drag the pile inside the 10 back to around the seven-yard line. Bringing up third down. Six-yard, hey, is that the first of the night? I think it is. Well, Miles Twyman runs like a freight train, so it's fitting that it's coming on by. He, uh, he certainly gets behind his pads and gets a head full of steam. A nice carry there, but a big third down here for this Tigers offense. You know they want to get in the end zone. Twyman stays on. They're going to have four wide receivers, two on each side. Parker ready to take the snap. He sends Twyman in motion, turns to the right, throws the pass and connects with his receiver. That's a touchdown for the Tigers as he connects with Jake Trebus, a nine-yard play for a touchdown. Great pass, great catch there as he was going to the ground. Wow. Absolutely, and Parker just stood back. He had all day in the pocket. Trebus 
uh, just ran a little curl route there, and he was wide open. That was a busted coverage uh, by the Indians' defense. And Darlington is able to get six off of the fumble recovery, and the extra point is up and good. And that was Obi Oha with the attempt there, and now the score moves to 14 to zero. So both of the scores from Darlington so far in this game, Ian, have come right after our Murchy turnovers. They sure have, and, and we talked about it uh, before the game. Uh, our Murchy lost a tough game. Pepperell turning the ball over five times. You simply can't put it on the ground, especially on the road. But uh, one of uh, one of Darlington's goals, they have goals that stay the same every week and they like to force two turnovers a game. Well, you can check that box in the first quarter. That's right. And again, uh, the most important part of that is being able to cash in, finish drives, and get points, and the Tigers are up 14-0. to zero. Great start to the first quarter of this football game. Yeah, and, a, and an absolute rocket there from Luke Parker, who's having to step in for starting quarterback Sammy Kajeski, who got a little banged up there on the road against Pepperell last week. He is in, in pads. So uh, he may be available if needed, but right now Parker is, is doing the job out there, uh, stepping in and playing very well. And that's one of the blessings that this Darlington team has this year. Obviously, Sammy Koncheski and Luke Parker kind of have different skill sets, uh, but boy, they've, they've got a great backup and Luke Parker, and he's doing a great job tonight and helping them be in front in this game. Absolutely. Oh. Obiaha to kick it away, and that's going to be a line drive, little squib kick. Oh, it bounces off of one of the Almerchi players, but they will fall on it at about the 28-yard line. And so far, Almerchi's best starting field position of the game is on this drive at the 28, while Darlington has started at the 50, their own 45, and the Almerchi 8. So uh, the Indians have moved the ball. They, I mean, even on the fumble play, the, that that was going to be possibly a first down carry, uh, but uh, you, you had the Tigers come up. I didn't see who forced the fumble on that play, but it was a helmet on the ball as that ball came rocketing out. Uh, so ball security will be big for our Murchie, and, and you've got to think that the Tigers are, are smelling blood and water right now. They're going to keep coming after them. All gas, no brakes, as Coach Groves would say, man. There's the snap from under center. They're going to hand it off, go back to Coonley this time, and he carries the pile about two or three yards. That was a good hard run for the Almerchi Indians. Yeah, it didn't look like he had much at all, but uh, almost picked up four yards on that carry. Again, Almerchi's getting a push. They're, they're moving the football. They just have, have made some crucial mistakes, coughing the ball up. 130 left to go here in the first quarter with the Tigers leading at 14 to zero. This is second down and six here for the Indians working right to left. There's the snap. They're going to turn, hand it off, go back to Cooley and the Tigers swarm and bring him down. And that should be no game. You said it. Cooley uh, had no opportunity to get anything going there as a host of Tigers came in and took him down right at the line of scrimmage. Lost a couple of yards actually. So this brings up third down and seven here for the Almerchi Indians, who in their last couple of drives have turned it over and had to punt. They turned it over twice and had to punt once. Shotgun formation, everybody's going to be in tight here for this. On the line of scrimmage, there's the snap. Quarterback's going to drop back, looking to throw, and he's able to connect, but a great defensive stop from Talon Shirey, who came in quick and brought down Seagraves. Yeah, good catch there by Seagraves as they tried to set up the, the screen there, but uh, great coverage by Talon Shirey. We call his name a lot on offense, but he is a heck of a defender as well. Made the play there and forces the punt. Three and out here for the Tigers, so it's been fumble, punt, fumble punt and if you're a tiger fan you hope that trend continues <laughs> oh no doubt about it now blaine raglan's on to handle the punting duties we only got five seconds left though here in the quarter the first quarter of the ball game we're getting ready for the snap but we're not going to see it until we change sides and get ready for the second quarter so we're going to take a break tigers off to a good start they're up 14 to 0 as we get ready for the second quarter we're back in one minute
All right, we've swapped sides of the field. We're getting ready for a punt. Matt, and some did, recognitions taking place there. Matt, did you know our friend Ben Baker's been on the chain gang all year? Oh, really? Yeah, he I just did texted not know me. That. I had no idea. Is he out there right he's now? He's out there. He's running. He's working the chains. Wow. That's awesome. I had no idea. Yeah. They're talking about the Gus bus. They are talking about the Gus said. bus. Yeah. Well, george has got a bye week this week, so, uh, you know, he's a preferred walk-on for the Bulldogs. Ragland to punt it away here for a Murchie, but we have flags that come yeah, in. Yeah, Rylenstein came, uh, came out of his stance a little early there, and that'll, that'll move the Tigers back, or the Indians back five yards. Got a text message from Scotty Hancock with a picture. He's got a nice setup. He's outside with a flat screen, big screen TV, and a fire going, and he's watching some Tigers football. Good to hear from Scotty. Not a bad way to spend a Thursday night. And uh, Scotty, tell Gatlin we said hello. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoyed watching him play the last several years. Hope everything's going great over at uh, Kennesaw State. There's the snap and the kick, and this one is going to drop just beyond the 50-yard line, and it'll be down at about the 48-yard line. So Man, great, great field position. Again. Once again, once again, and he was lucky to get that ball off. Uh, snap was a little hard to handle, and. Darlington was bringing the heat, uh, but he got it off. And uh, But again, Darlington's just been in great position all night. And they have a chance to really uh, seize control of this ball game. If they can go and put another touchdown on the board, Matt, they, they, will, uh, they will certainly be in control. This is first and 10 for the Tigers, starting at their own 48-yard line, so almost midfield to start the drive. Parker lines them up. Here's the snap to him. He'll turn, hand it off to Marion Floyd. Oh, oh man, he gets leveled by number 35 for the Almerchi Indians, Hayden Phillips. What a hit yeah. that was. Hayden, Hayden coughed the ball up both times. I think he might have taken a little of his frustration out on Demarion Floyd right there. That was nasty. And somehow Demarion was able to get two yards out of that ordeal. Gets it to midfield at the 50, bringing up second down and eight. But boy, that was a, that's one of the biggest hits we've seen this All year. All year, no doubt. Gosh. Oh. Two wide receivers to the near, but he popped up really quick. There's the snap. They're going to pitch it to Miles Twyman to the right side. And he's going to be brought down after a pickup about four, about four yards on that play. Yeah, Miles' second carry of the game. Floyd's back onto the field. Yeah, these guys are are built tough. They There's are no question. Yep. Very if somebody hit team. me as hard as Demarion just got hit, I'd still be <laughs> laying there. I might be there tomorrow. I wouldn't be able to breathe. I'd have a wind not coming for sure. Four wide receivers here on third and five. Parker drops back. He's got all day. He puts the ball in the air, and that one is going to be out of bounds, incomplete. He did have somebody that closed in on him right there at the end of the play. Yeah, I think he was just throwing that away. Even if that had stayed in bounds, Demarion had already stepped out. So uh, it'll be a three and out here. And, and give our Murchie some credit. It has not gone their way so far tonight, but they have forced two three and outs in the last three drives. And is Talon Shire going to kick it away, try to pin them deep here? You'll, we'll see Looks what like. happens. We're going to have a man back at the 20 here for the Indians. And uh, Talon on here for the punt. Here comes the kick off his boot. And that one's going to be a fair catch signaled by Raglan at about the 16-yard line. And he'll make the fair catch. It's been a back and forth ball game as far as possessions. You know, that Pepperell game last week, I think both teams had three, maybe four possessions in the first half. And this is already our Murchie's fifth with 10 minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, to go in the first half. And thankfully, Ian, it looks like the rain should hold off until maybe late tonight, yeah. early tomorrow morning, something like that. So we've ended up with a really, really good weather night for high school football. Oh, it's going to be great. By the time we get out of here, man, I brought a jacket with me. It's going to be about 60 degrees. Right now it's 61 degrees. Oh, it's going to so be about already 50 there. Then, I'm might, sure. might drop a little more for it's over with. All right. They're not running the AC in the booth because mm -hmm. they don't need to. I can use a little bit. I could bit. use a little. Yeah. Just, I'm a little hot nature, you know, man. I like to too. be just perfectly comfortable. Don't like to complain. Uh -uh. <laughs> Here's the snap to Lively. He's going to pitch to the to the right side, gets it to Coonley, and he's going to be dropped at around the 19-yard line. Yeah. So he picked up two or three yards on that play. They're going to give him out all the, all the way out to the 20, Matt. Pitch was high there. That was another near fumble. Uh, Coonley did a good job reining that one in. Coonley's 
six one, two hundred five pounds. Pretty tall. Yeah. He's got some size on him. I'm telling you, this is the biggest arm energy team I've seen in mm -hmm. a long time. They've got some big guys. Second down and about six here for the Indians. There's the snap. They're going to pitch, go off to the left side with Seagraves, and he has got some room to run, picks up a couple of yards here on that play, and that sets up a third down here for the Indians and, and yeah. potentially manage them. Yeah, third down and four. That keeps them on schedule. Great pursuit there, though. Uh, you know, Seagraves has got some wiggle, but uh, I think it was Ashton Albers that got out there and made the tackle. And Coach Groves mentioned to us he's really familiar with Seagraves because he was over at Rome a couple of years ago when Coach Groves was the defensive coordinator over there. Talked about what a great athlete that young man is. 6'2", 170-pound wide receiver and cornerback for this team. Right now he's split as a wide receiver. There's the snap. They're going to hand it off, and there's nothing there but the Tigers. Good defense. Yeah, I saw Sam 20 on that one. We'll have to look at the replay to see it. Somebody else got there right at the same time. I thought Let's I saw see. 55 Connor Ellison over there at one point, but we'll check on that and be sure. It was, yeah, it was 20 that ended up making the tackle. But like Coach Grove said, it's about making the right fits. And sometimes to make the play, you're not the one who makes the tackle. And if you watch that replay there, the, the Darlington defenders were taking on the right blockers, and Sam 20 was able to step right in there and, and, and get a tackle for loss. So everybody was doing their job on that play. So the Indians will have to punt it away. Raglan puts the boot on it. That's going to fly down to about the 45 and take an all Murchie bounce to around the 41 where they're going to down it. But again, uh, the Darlington Tigers are going to have good field position again. They sure are, Matt. Where will this one start? The 41. How about that? And Luke Parker and the Tiger offense will trot back out onto the field. High school football night for you on WLAQ. We're going to be switching up some of our coverage this week, obviously having the game tonight. But since the other games are all tomorrow night, we're going to have the Room Orthopedic Center High School Football Scoreboard Show for you tomorrow from 10 to 1130. So make sure to listen in and call in to that show. Four wide receivers set, two on each side here for Parker. He's going to have Floyd in the backfield with him, and he will run it to start the drive and spins around. Nice spin yeah. move. Gets a couple extra yards because of it. Gets about five. Absolutely. And the yards have actually been really tough. It's 14 to nothing, Matt, but uh, Armerchi's done a good job against the run. They picked up about 30 yards on a, a, a tunnel screen to Talon Shirey that set up the first touchdown, and then they only had to go eight yards to get uh, the second. So Marmarchi's defense has played pretty well, forcing two three and outs already tonight. Four wide receivers, three on the far side, one on the near. There's the snap to Parker. He turns, hands it off to Miles Twyman this time, carries the pile a couple extra yards, yards after contact, and that's going to set up a third down and very Parker. short here. He got it. He got it. Oh, he got yeah, it. Yeah, he, he picked up seven yards there. That's definitely a first down. They just haven't moved the chains yeah. yet. We'll have to give Ben a hard time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you guys, if you don't know Ben, he's a good guy. Works out there at the Spires. Uh, was Great. on that championship team for Pepper, right? This is going to be a toss to the right side. Gives it off to Demarion Floyd. Runs it out to the right. Down the wow. sidelines he goes and gets probably nine or ten yards. Probably moving the chains there. Kind of knocked one of the sticks over as he. Went out of bounds. Yeah, pitch play there. Demarion bounces it to the outside. And, yeah, Matt, he picked up eight or nine yards there. Could, yeah, they're going to give him nine. So it's going to bring up second one here for the Tigers. Going to change some personnel here. They get ready for this next play. You're going to see Al Ashton Albers in for this package. And it looks like we may have a timeout. Yep. We do. We do. Yep. So we're going to take it as well. Darlington leads it 14 to 0 with just under seven minutes to play in the first half. We'll be back in 30 seconds.
feel like. I have no idea, man. <laughs> I guess we're going to go. Looks like I'm, I'm going to be in trying. I'm going to go. I'm yeah. going, going to Pepper. I'm going to try to drag you with me. I'm going to guilt you into it on this broadcast all night. We'll, uh, we'll be able to eat some popcorn, sit back, and actually watch the game. Hey, that would be a different situation. Yeah. I hadn't been to a game to just watch it high school-wise in a long time. Well, you just let me know, Matt. The, the Griffin Express is going to be rolling up to try, and you are so welcome to hop in with me. Uh, and the Dragons coming off a big win last week. That's a heck of a, a matchup. Well, let me double-check and make sure we don't have anything going on at the home front and might be able to make that happen. Heck, yeah. Sounds like a good way to spend a Friday evening to me. That'll be a good game. We won't there, pass Bucky's, so I can't use that as a carrot here, unfortunately. Well, not too long ago, a few weeks ago, <laughs> I told you on the broadcast that I was going to take my mom down to the varsity and then hop on 75 and shoot pass home and – go to Calhoun, go to Bucky's, and we did just that. I had photo proof of that That's whole situation. Dedication right there. It was awesome because we had a great meal, had time for that to settle, got some more snacks, and then had snacks for the rest of the day when we got home. Amazing. It's nice. <laughs> Speaking of snacks, the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game is coming up after right. tonight's action. And who will it be? We'll find out. Last week it was Ade DeSalis who had a 32-yard field goal. And did a fantastic job. He's done a great job on extra points for the Tigers this season and has really developed and has been working hard and earned the heck out of those cupcakes. He did. He did. I mean, let's think about where you were in the game there. Those were the first points to be scored, and it was a wet, nasty night out there. Not great kicking conditions. And he split the pipes, and then he hit his only extra point as well. Uh, and let's not forget that that young man was kind of just thrust into action unexpectedly Hendrix Jones was injured on the first play of the Dade County game he was handling the place kicking duties for the most part uh, and and he had to he had to go in it's next man up right so we've got a situation here uh, evidently there's a drone but it's not the one that they're using for the broadcast and so the officials have stopped the game because of it and they're trying to get that figured out and sorted out so we've got a stoppage of play and again it's not the one related to any of the broadcast somebody's flown a drone too close uh, to the field, and they've got to get that taken care of before we can resume play. So, not sure what the situation is with that. But yeah. We need to find one of the better marksmen here at Darlington and let them let take it down. <laughs> oh. Or wait, send Miles Twyman in the heat seeker. He'll get it. <laughs> but we're glad you're with us here on the broadcast today. Might be a good time to thank all of our wonderful sponsors who allow us to be here. Oh, absolutely, man. I'm glad you pointed that out, and we'll certainly do that. But I think they're about to start playing again as you say that. But of we've course. got on the radio tonight, we got Atrium Health Floyd, also Avery Drugs, Embry Painting, Georgia Lottery, Georgia Northwestern Technical College, Harbin Clinic, Honeymoon Bakery, and the icing on the cake player of the game, Riverside Auto Group, the Rome Orthopedic Center, and Ware Mechanical, longtime sponsors of sports coverage on WLAQ. And we've got a new one this week as well as La Scala Mediterranean Bistro is uh, is sponsoring our first down. So you'll hear us mention them hopefully on this next play. Well, let's see. Where were we? At second down and one. And shotgun formation here for the Darlington Tigers as they've got it on the Almerchi side of the field, leading at 14-0 to with just under seven minutes to play here in the first half of the ball game. Here is the snap to Parker, and we got a whistle and a flag. So a stoppage of play after a stoppage of play. That's right. That That's got to be a false start on the Tigers. Move them back to second and six. Timmy Smith is going to run out onto the field here for this package for the Darlington Tigers. Coming off is Noah Duggan, who's been doing a great job for the Tigers on both sides of the ball this season. Absolutely, leading tackler on defense. Three wide receivers to the near side. Parker lines them up in the gun. Here's the snap on second down and six. They're going to run the football. Quarterback's got it. A little deceptive there. A flag comes in at the end of the play. He did get about two or three yards, but let's see what the penalty's about, Ian. Yeah, this is in an odd place. He may have been a face mask, may have been a hold. We'll have to, we'll have to see what they signal here. And it it's will a be hold a hold on the offense. So penalties on back-to-back -back plays. It was second and one. And now they'll move them back. It'll be a spot foul, Matt. So we'll see where they march the ball back to. Duggan runs back out onto the field. Also entering the playing surface is going to be Jake Trebus here for this package. Yeah. Well, 
you don't often get to blame things on technology. Well, yeah, you do. But, uh, <laughs> but that yeah, drone really, the, 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 the drone really <laughs> took the air out of uh, of Darlington's drive here. They were they were really moving the ball until that stoppage of play. That's a good point. Yeah. So this brings us up second down and 15 here for the Tigers after the penalty yards. Ball is now at the Darlington 45-yard line. Parker has him in the gun. Man motions here to the near side. That's Duggan. There's the snap. Dropping back is Parker. Going to throw a wide receiver screen over to Talon Shirey. Nice spin move. Wow. Two of them in a row. And then he's going to be taken down for a loss. Some great moves, but just couldn't get any forward momentum going on that play and find no. some space to run. He went east. He went west. He went north. He went south. That, that was uh, He went round and round. He did. He did. A lot, a lot of great moves. Unfortunately, it ends up in a loss as, as the Indians were able to eventually – Rain in the slippery Talon Shirey, and it's going to be third and a mile here. Uh, third down and 15 here for the Tigers as that ball wound back up at the 45 yard line. So the Tigers will come back to the line of scrimmage with a 14 to 0 lead. Clock taking just under six minutes to play here in the first half of the football game. And they'll line up in a shotgun with one wide receiver on each side. Well, two on the near side, one on the far side. There's the snap. Parker is going to hand it off. They'll try to reverse it the other way. Uh, cut up inside. It's going to be Miles Twyman. and I thought he was going to break free I for a second too. there. And he did pick up about four or five yards, but the Tigers are going to have to punt it away here on fourth and 13. Yeah, that's uh, – Darlington's gone to that play a few times. This year's a little delay handoff. It's a sneaky play, well designed. And uh, he was he was one slip tackle away from really picking up some big yardage. And we've got an Indian down on the turf here. Yes, sir. So, again, we'll go ahead and kind of talk to you a little bit about our coverage of football this weekend. Obviously, we got the game tonight. Rome Orthopedic Center High School football scoreboard show with Lynn and Austin will come up tomorrow at 10, and we'll go until about 1130. And one of the things that really makes that show go is your phone calls. So we always want to encourage people, if you're going to games or, you know, you've been watching the Darlington game, have some comments on what you saw and all that sort of thing, uh, give those guys a call and give them your take. They'd love to hear from you, and, and they're doing a great job with that. And we appreciate them and look forward to, to listening to them tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be fun. And me and Matt get a Friday night uh, off, and uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be interesting. To, to keep up with the action. A lot of big games. you got Pepperell at Trine tomorrow. You've got uh, Calhoun at Dalton. That's going to be a good game. Model up at North Murray. Um, so no shortage of big, big football games tomorrow night. So the Tigers will have to punt it away again. You're going to have Raglan standing at midfield about the 20. And that's going to be uh, drops and will be down by the Tigers. And that will pin them about the 15-yard line, it looks like, when it rolls dead. Yep. Already the sixth possession of the half. And Darlington's defense has been dominant, forcing three and outs on the last two Armerchi possessions. The drive before that was only one play, and Armerchi coughed it up. So, been a good half for the Darlington defense. And it looks like Almerchi is going to start right at the 15-yard line on their side of the field, down 14 to zero. Big crowd on hand tonight here for Thursday night football. They've packed out the home stands. Almerchi has almost got the entire away stands packed out. So, um, as expected, great atmosphere here for this football game. A lot of people here to take this one in tonight. And watch these two teams play. Shotgun formation, Lively ready to take the snap from the 15. He's going to turn, hand it off, and they will run it up the middle, try to power it forward, which they did about four yards on that play. I assume that was Coonley. I got screen, couldn't see uh, the ball carrier's number, but it uh, looked like it was Coonley. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to catch it on the replay as well, but I think you're right, Matt. Yeah, yep. it was. Another train going by, man. That's train number two. We're staying on top of it tonight. Oh, yeah. Two wide receivers to the near side, one on the far here for second down and five. They're going to hand it off to Cooley. This time he bounces out to the right. Nice stiff arm at the end yep. of the play, and he should have the first down and then a couple of yards after that. Yeah, yeah, nice run there by Cooley. For certain. Sam Wooten got in there, but Cooley laid two stiff arms to shake loose and pick up that first down. Talon Showery eventually brought him down, but they will move the chains. 
So first and 10 here for the Almerchi Indians. The last game that Almerchi played in was a loss against the Pepple Dragons. Coonley had 35 yards on 14 carries in that game. So obviously uh, one of the strategies on defense for Pepple in that game was to, to keep that young man at bay. There's the snap. They're going to run the football and I think that was Lively that kept the ball. It, I think you're right and got about a yard. Not too much there up the middle of the defense. A defense that gets a key member back in Sam Wooten. Uh, you know, Coach Groves has talked about it, and he was really, really proud of how Noah Duggan stepped in and played that Mike position. Uh, but uh, it, it, Duggan's back in his, his natural spot, and Wooten is, is back there in the middle and, and already has made some big plays tonight. So this is second down and nine. Lively takes the snap, runs it off the left side, and they're going to try to string the play out, and there he's going to be brought down. Not much there. Good job by the defense. And I'll let him get to the edge. And that'll set up third and long. Connor Ellison was in pursuit. Noah Duggan eventually made the tackle. Uh, Aiden Davis was out there as well. So Tigers did a great job sideline to sideline. This is third down and nine here for the Almerchi Indians with the ball at the 30-yard line. They're going to send a couple of wide receivers to the near side, one on the far side. Lively is going to line the Indians up here for this third down play with three minutes to go in the first half of the ball game. Tigers lead at 14 to zero if you're tuning in for the first time tonight. Want to know the score. And it looks like we're going to have... A stoppage of play here again. See what's going on. Time. Penalty on our Murchie? Yeah, I haven't seen the signal yet here. Delay game. Okay. Yep. Move them back five yards. It'll be third and 14. Two minutes and 50 seconds left in the quarter. Both teams have all their timeouts. Two wide receivers to the near, one on the far here for Almerchi working left to right, trailing but in this game 14 to zero. Lively drops back, puts the ball in the air quick, connects with Ragland, and he's gonna be dropped, and this is gonna be a punt situation here for Almerchi. They tried to set up the tunnel screen there, and it was well defended. McKay Rush came clean off the edge, but Lively got the ball out of his hands quickly to Ragland, Sam 20, Aiden Davis, who else, and Timmy Smith were all over there to make the play and that will force another R. Murchie punt. So Raglan to punt it away. You're gonna have Talon Chiry standing at about the 41 yard line on the far hash. Tigers will be working right to left. Here comes the kick off the boot of Raglan and this one's gonna bounce and roll all the way down to about the 33 yard line and that's where the Indians will down it. And that is the worst starting field position of the night for the Tigers. It's uh, it's. It's been a good night as far as where they've started snapping the football. Yeah, when your worst starting position of a game is at about the 34-yard line and you got two minutes left in the first half, you've, you've had a good night as far as that's concerned, for sure. And they would love to go get points of any kind before the half here. Let's not forget, Darlington won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so they will receive the opening kickoff. So if they could double down here and get some points before they go to the locker room, it would be to the delight of everyone in purple and white. Two wide receivers to the far side, one in the near, shotgun formation. They're gonna hand it to Marion Floyd. He goes out to the edge on the right side. Now he's starting to go down the sidelines and picks up about six yards on that first down play. I tell you what, I'm a tip of the cap to this Armurchie defense. I mean, that was a good run by Floyd. It was good positive yardage, but they have they have not let him pop the big one yet. He is a threat to do it every time you put the ball in his hands. Yes, he is. And that sets up a second down and five here for the Tigers with just under two minutes to play here in the first half of the ball game with the Tigers leading at 14 to zero. Would love to put some more points on the board before they get to halftime. Parker gonna put this ball in the air, connects with Aiden Davis. Nice grab on the sidelines and they get the first down. About what, seven yards? Uh, Yes, sir. Yeah. That's Aiden Davis' first reception of the game. Young man who contributes on both sides of the ball and also every week it seems like even if he doesn't get the black shirt, his special teams play and his blocking gets mentioned by head coach Wayne Groves. 
Two wide receivers to the far side, one in the near. Here's the snap to Parker. He's going to hand it off. They'll run it back the other way. Demarion Floyd's got it. He's down the sidelines. I don't think anybody's going to get him this time. He's inside the 20, 15, and he scampers out of bounds just about the 10-yard line, so a big run from Demarion Floyd. You're always feeling like he's a step away from breaking that big one, as you referenced earlier. That was a 45-yard scamper. Wow. So he's now up to 79 yards on 11 carries. And just like that, and they went back to that little delay play that they ran on third and long on the last drive. That time they popped it. Ball's actually at the 17-yard oh, line. Oh, he stepped out, okay. Yep. But uh, shotgun formation, Parker turns, gives it off to Demarion Floyd. I thought I saw a hole up and up there for a second. He cut back to left, and he's going to be brought down at about the 10-yard line. So he is able to get some good positive yards there out of that play. Now he's at 79 yards. Yeah. Okay, see, I'm scribbling for no reason. <laughs> I should have just waited. Trying to keep up with the stats the best I can. So second down and three here for the Tigers with the ball at the 10-yard line. Shotgun formation, Floyd in the backfield here with Parker. Two wide to the right side. Parker is rolling out. He's got company, puts the ball in the air, and, ooh, that was almost intercepted. It's going to be incomplete. Yeah, yeah, he's lucky to have that one Ugh. back. And I know he was trying to throw the ball away. He, he, he pulled the Tony Romo spin, but uh, he couldn't get loose. And uh, yeah, that was well out of bounds, not an interception. So a third and five here for the Tigers with a minute and seven left in the first half. So third down for the Tigers and three. They'll roll back up to the line of scrimmage, which is at the 10 yard line. They are in the red zone. Shotgun formation, two wide on each side. Floyd in the backfield. There's the snap. Quick pass to the outside. Cuts inside, to, and that's going to be Talon Shirey in there for a touchdown on a 10 yard play. Wow. Yes, indeed, Matt. So pass to Talon Shirey, and he cuts inside and makes it in the end zone again, a 10-yard pass play for a touchdown of the Tigers. Strike again, we'll get the PAT attempt here going, and that would make it 21 to nothing if Tochukwu Obioha can punch it through, and he's done it a couple of times already in this game. Here comes the kick on the way, and that one's gonna be through. So the score moves to 21 to zero, Ian. Sure does, and they get a big touchdown before the half. Minute and one left. If the defense can hold out, that's a, that's a heck of a, a half football here for the Darlington Tigers. Indeed. And they've come out with a lot of energy, Matt. You know, we could we could sense it when we talked to Coach Groves last night that he, he felt like he had his team focused and ready to ready to shake that loss off last week. And 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 you know they had a special guest with them uh, that, that was going to speak with them in the locker room. Coach Groves was telling us about that a a, a state champion quarterback. That's right, indeed. Uh, Robert Hortman, who was on that 1998 team, was quarterback of that team. And what a just unbelievable season that was and run uh, to pick up the state championship there back in 1998. And I did see him out there on the field with his sons throwing yeah. the ball around before the game. And usually they sit right in front of us, but uh, well, he's not right in front of us today. But It's the team still, experience. Oh, he's yeah, still yeah. out there. So, yeah. so they, they, get to, they get to be a part of the whole – game day experience they were in the locker room pre-game halftime post-game and they're down on the field today enjoying that but he was coach Groves was excited to have him talk to his team gotcha I didn't realize that would go through the entire yeah, uh, yeah. game and all that but I do see him up there on the sidelines right now it looks like he's talking to Dr. Brown but anywho here comes the kickoff there from OBO high that's going to be a squib and that'll be brought out at about the 15 yard line and I believe that was a lot nope that was Number 14, Jackson, who brought that out and got a good head full of steam. We'll see where they spot it, but he got a pretty good return there. Yeah, and that'll set our merch up with their best starting mm -hmm. field position of the game. That ball will be spotted at the 31 or the 32? 32. 32 Let's see. Yep. Yeah, 32. Six possessions so far. For the Armour Indians, the best drive they had was the second drive of the game. It went six plays before they punted it away, but it has been fumble, punt, fumble, punt, punt, punt for the for the Indians. Tigers lead at 21 to zero. We've got 55.3 seconds left on the clock here in the first half. Lively lines them up in the gun, two wide to the near side, one on the far side. They're gonna throw a quick pass and he connects with Easton Jackson for a short game. I think he dropped Did he drop it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Lively looked like he was going to run, and then he kind of yep, shoveled sure that short, hit the turf. 
And uh, train number three, I believe, is wow. uh, rumbling by right now. They're happening in quick succession They really tonight. are. We're not used to this Thursday night train schedule. Must be some special deliveries tonight. Two wide receivers to the near side, one on the far. And there's the snap. Rolling to the near side, going to put the ball in the air, connects with a receiver, and he takes a punishing hit. He caught the ball. That was number 42, Jackson Hightower. And then he got clobbered by Sam Wooten, I believe. It was Noah Duggan. Oh, it was Noah Duggan. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I saw Sam running away after the play, but I didn't. Yeah, lively hung see that the ball up a little bit. Good job yep. by that young man from our Murchie, number 42, Jackson Hightower, to hold on to the ball because Noah Duggan absolutely cleaned his clock. Shotgun formation. This is third down and seven. Ball at the 32 here for the Indians. 18 seconds left on the clock in the half. They're rolling out, looking to pass. Lively's got the ball and a lot of company in the backfield. He connects with a receiver, and he hits the deck. It looked like he might have got bit by the turf monster there. Believe he did. That was Raglan on the reception. A good job there by Lively. He rolled out to his right, bought time, waited for somebody to come open. Henry Ledbetter was bearing down on him and he found Raglan in the middle of the field and yeah it was yeah, nobody got him he just lost his footing and that'll do it that's the end of the first half Darlington Tigers lead at 21 to 0 they won the toss deferred to the second half so not only do they have a 21 to lead at half 21 to nothing lead at halftime they get the ball to open up the second half yes they do not a bad way to start a Friday night of football here at the lakeside, we're at Darlington School, Chris Hunter Stadium. Darlington leads it at halftime, 21 to zero. Let's step out for four minutes. My name is Ryan Sarville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages. The reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're then guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. Shop for your next car, truck, or SUV at Riverside Auto Group. Check out RiversideAutoGroup.com today to browse their selection or visit with them in person at Riverside Chevrolet Buick GMC in Rome, Riverside Toyota in Rome, and the all-new Riverside Buick GMC Cadillac in Cartersville. Locally owned and operated by the Welburn family since 1974. That's Riverside Auto Group. Visit RiversideAutoGroup.com. Here, I'm becoming who I want to be. Here, I am looking toward my future. Here, we learn from our failures so that we may soon succeed. Here, we're passionate about learning and trying new things every day. Here, we search for new perspectives and cultures so we can better understand the world. Because at Darlington, we know we're in the most trusted hands. As we discover new passions and learn more about ourselves through academics, athletics, fine arts, and service to our community. We show our versatility as we choose different pathways to our goals. This is our home. We embrace challenges and persevere, even when something seems impossible. We collaborate and create to take our place in the world. We know that together we can make an impact. This is our moment, our time. Graduates today, Darlington forever. At Rome Orthopedic Center, we salute students, freshmen and seniors, athletes and artists, first stringers and choral singers, band majors and game changers. We hope you never need orthopedic care, but if you do, choose the only practice in the Rome area solely dedicated to the orthopedic needs of the students and families in our community. Rome Orthopedic Center. To make an appointment, call 706-292-0040.
Cusa Steel is a family-owned full-line steel service center located in Rome, Georgia. Since 1972, we've been working to make our customers more efficient by providing steel product supply and processing all in one place. We are proud to provide a large range of products, including hot rolled and cold finished steel, stainless steel, galvanized steel, aluminum, and alloys. Our capabilities enable us to assemble and process steel orders within days, shortening your lead time. Kusa Steel, steel for your project. Welcome back in, everybody. We're at halftime. Darlington Tigers with a commanding lead after a half a play, 21 to 0. They won the toss we'll defer and deferred to the second half, so we'll get a look at that Darlington offense in the second half. And uh, we're just glad to have you with us on the broadcast tonight. It is homecoming night here at Darlington, which is kind of unusual that you're having a football game on, on a Thursday night, but also unusual to be having homecoming on a Thursday night as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, as the court is uh, out on the 50-yard line here. Big night for everybody uh, in purple and white. And if you're watching on the video, we'll do our best as we go along through the halftime period here. Um, not super prepared to do this, but we do have a script that they had given us related to the, the court here, so we'll see what we can to get in some names as we go along. But we'll also talk about the first half in the game. Uh, we invite you to stay tuned after tonight's action for CBS Sports. I almost said it, man, but then I caught myself. But we'll have the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game, and then we'll wrap it up and have CBS Sports for you the rest of the evening because the scoreboard show is going to happen on Friday night. No other area games being played tonight, so we don't have any scores to relay, relay to you right now. We could tell you about some other games that are going yeah, on in sports because yeah. there's an NFL game getting played tonight. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars are in New Orleans taking on New Orleans. Of course, that's who you would take on in if you are in New Orleans. Yeah, yes, the um, They're up 7-0 <laughs> to zero, unless you're playing in the Sugar Bowl or something like yeah, that, I right, suppose. Right. But as far as NFL is concerned, wow, that was interesting. I got my Thursday night brain working, not yeah. my Friday night. And uh, my Thursday night brain, well, my Friday night brain's not any better, so what can I say? Um, do have some NCAA football taking place tonight. James Madison, as you pointed out, is playing Marshall. Right now they're up 3-0 to zero in that game. James Madison's 6-0 to start they're, they're, the season. They're 6-0, and, 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 you know, we had some discussion about your Jacksonville State Gamecocks and how they're – off to what a five and one six, six and six two one, six and two yeah okay. uh, yeah they've lost two games okay. this year they lost to coastal carolina and who was the other team that beat them i'll have to think about it for a second they lost one other game but uh, yeah they've already won six games so they would be bowl eligible and james madison also bowl eligible but in the same exact situation that your jacksonville state team is in they are ineligible because they're new to uh the conference so uh and and i was listening to the the pundits on the national radio shows talk about this and how they were wanting them to play the ineligible ineligible is what they were trying to call it and if if they won't let jacksonville state and james madison play in a bowl game they should let jacksonville state and james madison play each other in the wow. in, ineligible well, that, that which i love that'd be something else it would, it would but uh the, young, the lady that was talking about it, i can't remember what her name was i caught that uh, on my drive home uh, she was just saying that because the conferences, the, the group of five is guaranteed a spot with their highest ranked team in a New Year's Six Bowl, <laughs> they didn't want an eligible team disrupting that because it has to be a conference champion in order to do that. So I guess that's their reasoning, which is something we were talking about earlier today. I still don't really think I get that. But, uh, you know, they're a member of the conference. They should be able to win it. I agree with you 100%, especially in a situation where you've got a team like a Jacksonville State. They are moving up. Right. So, you know, I don't know. It's one of those strange situations that takes place. But the good news is they've won six games, and Rich Rodriguez has done a tremendous job for the Jacksonville State Gamecocks. It's been a lot of fun to watch the last couple of seasons, and I was a little bit nervous with them moving up to FBS, but they've handled the transition very well this first yeah, year. So. Yeah, absolutely. They had the right man at the helm, a great hire for your alma mater. Yeah. 
Well, let's see. We're going to go ahead and take another break here on the radio end of the broadcast for you. And we're glad you're with us. Darlington up 21 to 0. When we come back, we'll run down the scoring from the first half and kind of start to set the stage for the second half of this football game. Uh, but you're listening to live coverage of Darlington football here from Darlington School, taking on the Armurchi Indians in a pivotal Region 7A Division 1 showdown here tonight on a Thursday night. We'll send it back to the studio for four minutes. Darlington up, Darlington up 21 to 0 over Armurchi. We're back in four minutes.
We welcome you back to live coverage of Darlington School football here on WLAQ and also the live stream produced by Northwest Georgia Media on the Darlington School YouTube channel and also Facebook. I think they got it on a couple other platforms as well. Lots of ways that you can follow Darlington football over the course of the regular season and also once you get into that next part of the season, which will be the playoffs, which, man, that is not that far away. And, of course, this is the next to last uh, regular season game of the year. Darlington playing on a Thursday night. They'll have a bye week coming up next week, the second of the season, and then get prepared to go up to Sam R. McCain to take on the Trine Bulldogs to wrap up the regular season. And then we'll see how everything shakes out in terms of getting ready for that third part of the season, which is the playoffs. And I can tell you a little bit about that, but not much at this point because there's still a lot to be settled in Region 7A Division 1. But I can tell you that Region 7 this year matches up with Region 6. And the teams that play football in that region, well, you've got Mount Vernon, a team that's 5-2. and two. you got St. Francis is 1-4 and four this year. Whitfield Academy, they are 2-5. and five. And Mount Pisgah Christian is 3-4. and four. There's only four teams in that region that play football the way that I looked at it. And they haven't played any region games yet. So we don't know how all that's wow. going to shake out. So that they will all make the playoffs. But it, we don't know which order all of that's going to be in at that point. Much like we don't know the order of how things are going to shake out in 7A Division One this year. And every one of those teams uh, are familiar to us. We, oh, yeah. Uh, we watched Darlington play each and every one of those over the course of the last several years. So the, the only one that I'm not sure about, I didn't look this up. I've personally never seen Darlington play Mount Vernon that I can remember, yeah. but I have seen them play St. Francis a couple of times, Whitfield Academy, Mount Pisgah Christian. Yeah. Uh, we've both seen them a couple of times yeah. in, in recent years. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But as we pointed out, you know, those teams so far in terms of the, the regular season hadn't played any region games. So we'll keep you updated on what's going on with that. But we're not to that point yet. Again, the Tigers have their second and final bye of the season next Friday after that. That's a trip up to trying to take on the Bulldogs. And we'll have the game for you on WLAQ and also the live stream. It's going to be a heck of a ball game. All right, right now here at halftime, it is 21-0. to zero. The Darlington Tigers are on top. And, Ian, let's kind of break down how that first half went while we got a couple of minutes here. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. Uh, you know, on the first uh, – well, Darlington won the toss. They deferred. And uh, our Murchie came out and picked up a, a quick first down. Uh, and then were, looked like they were going to have some success. I think they picked up two first downs, actually, on that first drive. It was – uh, five plays, and then on, on that third set of downs, they coughed the ball up at the 50-yard line. Uh, McKay Rush got on top of that ball and set Darlington up with great field position. Uh, key play on that drive was a 28-yard pass uh, from uh, Luke Parker to Talon Shirey. He took it down to the one-yard line, and from there, uh, Demarion Floyd punched that one in to give the Tigers an early 7 to nothing lead. After that, it was uh, a, a, another decent drive for, uh, for our mercy. They got six plays in before they were forced to punt. Uh, then they forced a three and out for Darlington. But on the next drive, Matt, on a run that looked like it was going to be successful, uh, Darlington got a helmet on the ball. Unfortunately, I didn't see who put that helmet on the ball. But Noah Duggan scooped it up at around the 40-yard line and returned it all the way to the eight, a 32-yard scoop and return, setting them up with first and goal at the eight. And a few plays later after a penalty, <coughs> Luke Parker hit Jake Trebus for an eight-yard touchdown uh, and gave Darlington the lead 14 to nothing. And then uh, there at the very end of the half, Darlington mounted a, a scoring drive that was uh, really sprung loose by a 40-yard run by Demarion Floyd where he got down the sidelines on a delayed handoff. And a few plays later, uh, it was Luke Parker throwing his second touchdown pass of the game. This time it was on a tunnel screen to Talon Shirey. Uh, and then uh, Tachuku Obioha hit all – three of his extra points, and we have a 21-point lead for the Darlington Tigers. And at the end of the night, it'll be the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game. And you got Luke Parker getting the start here tonight in the absence of Sammy Koncheski, who is dressed out and on the sidelines, a little bit banged up, so they're being careful with him. And Luke Parker's done a great job tonight. As you pointed out, he's already thrown a couple of touchdown passes and done a big-time job here for this Darlington Tigers offense. So he could be in the running for the award tonight. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, he's had to step in. It's a next-man-up mentality. Every coach will tell you that when somebody goes down. Next man's got to be ready to come in. Luke Parker has played meaningful snaps throughout the season. Uh, Sammy Koncheski's been a heck of a player, but he's banged up this week, and, and Parker's done a great job stepping in and, and taking the lead. 
Well, do want to let you know that, again, the Rome Orthopedic Center High School football scoreboard show is going to be tomorrow. That will get started at 10 o'clock. We'll go until 11.30, so make sure to turn it, tune in to Lynn and Austin for that and call in, participate in the show, get the scores, all that kind of good stuff going on with that. I'm uh, going to have some CBS Sports for you tonight. Coming up on Saturday, we will have college football for you. Boston College is going to be down at the Flats taking on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Noon kickoff for that one. Uh, pre-game is going to begin at 10 a.m., so you can tune in early and get, you, get your football fix on WLAQ. Then the following Saturday, Tech's going to remain at home to take on the red-hot North Carolina Tar Heels, and the game time for that end has not been determined at this point. They took the option to announce the game time coming up on Sunday, so we won't know until Sunday uh, until what time that game's going to kick off between Georgia Tech and North Carolina down at the flats the following weekend. Well, so. the Carolina fans are going to want to know because they always show up in droves for that game. Oh, yeah, and especially as good as that team is this year. Yeah. Fans yeah. want to lay eyes on that team in person. And, and by the way, uh, speaking of North Carolina, they host Virginia this Saturday. I think that's an early game, too, unless I'm badly mistaken. And is the is the Tech game a noon kickoff it's on a, Saturday? It's a noon kickoff yeah. against Boston College this week. So there's a little bit of information there for you. We're going to take about a let's, – let's do a three-and-a-half-minute break here, and we'll get you ready for the start of the second half. Darlington up at halftime, 21-0 overall. Murchie will be back for the second half after a three-and-a-half-minute break. At Rome Orthopedic Center, we salute students, freshmen and seniors, athletes and artists, first stringers and choral singers, band majors and game changers. We hope you never need orthopedic care, but if you do, choose the only practice in the Rome area solely dedicated to the orthopedic needs of the students and families in our community. Rome Orthopedic Center. To make an appointment, call 706-292-0040. At Darlington, we find our confidence in discovering who we are. In the classroom and on stage. The opportunities are endless. Our creativity knows no bounds as we take risks, explore opportunities, and stretch our minds. Together with our teachers, we use what we've learned to create beauty, to tell stories, to inspire. We discover new passions while allowing existing ones to flourish. We know that we can do anything, be anything, achieve anything. We give our time to something greater than ourselves. Whether we're sketching, singing, writing, or acting, we find new ways to express ourselves and share our talents with the world. We know that our ideas and contributions matter, and we take great pride in that. Because today, because today, because today, because today, because today, tomorrow, forever. We're Darlington Tigers. My name is Ryan Somerville. I am the sales manager for Business Water Solutions. We do water purification coolers as well as ice machines for any size business. We're on campus right now at Darlington School. Super happy to be here. They're one of our biggest customers. I myself played sports here. Our two founders played sports here. It was absolutely our pleasure to be a sponsor for Darlington Athletics. I think one thing that really sets us apart is our water purification. There's 13 stages. The reverse osmosis part of it has been a huge part of our success, along with our 24-hour guarantee for service calls. So when a customer does call us, we're then guaranteed within 24 hours. We were able to provide a touchless water system to make it more COVID-friendly in terms of germs and, and touching the, the water system. One thing I always say is we're not selling a product, we're selling our service. That's what we really push for every single day is to have a customer service experience like they've never had before. Northwest Georgia Media, we're all about capturing the moments that matter to you. From sports to arts, from concerts to business events, we're equipped to share what's happening in your world, live and in high definition. We leverage cutting edge technology and a knowledgeable crew to see that your most unforgettable events remain just that, unforgettable. Northwest Georgia Media, where the world is your audience.
Well, are you going to sing us out of the break there? A little Sweet, Sweet Caroline going on. Neil Diamond. Ba, ba, ba. I like there it, man. That, but, of course, it's great to have that here, but there's just no place to sing along to that like there is at Fenway Park. You know? That's the truth. And, uh, you know, I was trying to do my best whispering bill there because we were talking to Lauren, <laughs> Lauren Smith earlier, and he was called whisper, was, was Whispering Bill? Is that whispering Bill Anderson yeah, or something so. like that. Well, I wasn't familiar I, with I looked him, him up uh, just, just so I could know what it was all about, but he was called Whispering Bill because he sang in a whisper. That's right. So my ba 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 was was uh, an, a, an homage to whispering. Bill. I did not see what you did there, but now yeah. that you explained yeah, it, yeah. I'm like that's that's pretty that's epic. Right. And if you guys, if, if our listeners uh, on the on the stream uh, and and on the station, me and Matt, we talk sports every Thursday morning, and we get to talk to the man, the myth, the legend, Lauren Smith, Georgia Bulldogs legend, uh, great broadcaster with Larry Munson and all those years, and it is it's awesome to talk to him every week. And the thing about it is, man, we love the football talk that we have with him, but it's some of the other stuff that ends up being the highlight because you never know where he's going to be or who he's going to be hanging out with. And this past week, Ian, he had breakfast made by Tricia Yearwood and also Garth Brooks. Yeah, yeah the man's got country music Hall of Fame legends cooking him biscuits, bacon, sausage, and eggs, and grits. Said the grits That's were right. the highlight. Yeah. So uh, apparently Tricia and Garth love to cook. I remember one time he called back when my dad was hosting that segment and said something about, I, I'm trying to remember who it was. It was like Vern Lundquist maybe was making a mistake or I forget what it was. It was always something like that. But uh, the only thing is, is I just can't wait till we get into that zone where he gives us a call and says, hey, man, we got this going on. Why don't you come hang out with us? Yeah, right. I want, yeah. I want some breakfast by Garth. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. No. Yeah. <laughs> but it really is. It's awesome to talk to him. I mean, you know, all those years around the – the Georgia program, he's he's seen it all when it comes to SEC football and is just uh, a, has a wealth of knowledge. And he yeah. makes us feel good, too, because yeah. he acts like he likes talking to us. Right, right. You know? Definitely so it's, makes it's us feel good. a real pleasure. Good. Yeah, he's Thanks just for the got ego that personality. <laughs> I know, and it, that's just who he is, and I think that's one of the reasons why he's been so successful so long at what he does is he just makes people comfortable and has great conversations with people. So it's, it's pretty fun. I think he was a little disappointed you weren't a, a diehard country fan this morning, though. Well, I thought he would be impressed <laughs> by the fact that the country artists that I was listing were old school, like Hank Williams Sr. and Merle Haggard and the Leuven Brothers and stuff like that. The man had breakfast with modern country did. legends, right. Garth Brooks You're and right. Trisha Yearwood. So obviously that's his cup of tea. And, hey, man, I can get down to a little – Thunder rolls and some. I some. know. I had. Hey, look. I had the no fences tape when it came out. Yeah. It was big time when I was at St. Mary's School. I, I can't remember what age I was when that came out, but it's probably 12 or 13, I suppose. But anyway, here comes the kickoff to start the second half, and that one's going to sail all the way into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Well, that's the first time yeah. we've gotten to see the the strong right foot of Grayson Perry. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for being Johnny on the spot there. I was going to have to reference my roster. <laughs> gotcha. I was picking up what you were putting down there. I guess you do this this gig for, you know, however many years we've been doing it. 15? I, I think probably so. Probably in 2008, somewhere yeah, in there. Yeah, so that's yeah. about right for a lot of different teams and been hanging with the Tigers for a while now. It's been a tremendous amount of fun. Shotgun formation for the Tigers. They're going to start at the 20 after the touchback. And here's the snap. Parker's going to fake the handoff, run the football out to the right side. And he gets about four yards there on that play. Yeah, good keep there by Parker. And uh, they their first possession of the game, he pulled and ran for about eight or nine yards. This time he picks up four on first down. Game's coming up tomorrow in 7A Division I. You're going to have the Chattooga Indians up at Dade County, and you're going to have Pepperell Dragons at Tryon. And the air just kicked on. Boy, that is glorious. It is that glorious. Nice. It and really does. Spoiled rotten. <laughs> Three wide receivers to the near side, one on the far. There's the snap. Parker is going to put the ball in the air to Talon Shirey, get him in space, stays up, starts heading down the sidelines. He's going to be brought out of bounds at about the 32. That'll be enough for the first down. The La Scala first down. That's right, La Scala Mediterranean Bistro. First down for the Tigers. That was about an eight-yard gain there. Ball out to the 33-yard line as the Tigers get ready to go back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to send trips to the far side, one on the near side. Aiden Davis is the receiver here on the near side. Tigers working right to left, leading this one 21-0, just underway with the third quarter. 
Here's the snap to Parker. He's going to throw a pass out to the right side and connects with a receiver who gets a first down and is brought down just after that. That was a nice grab there by Jake Trebus. Good pass by Parker. Yeah, a gain of uh, 11 yards there. So the Tigers got a little something going here yeah. on the first drive of the second half. Letting Parker sling the ball around the yard a little bit. Stephen Moore makes his way back out onto the field for McKay Rush, it looks like came off. Took his lid off as he comes to the sidelines. He came out a little gimpy there. He did. Donnie Brown gonna go ahead and the, the trainer gonna look at him. Shotgun formation, turn and hand off to Miles Twyman and he stays up and gets about two or three wow. yards. Wow, maybe Kept four. driving, yeah, he yeah, <laughs> got four yards there. Twyman's fifth carry of the game. He's got 25 yards on the night. A couple of tackles of special teams as well. And we talk about Miles every week and how fast he is, but also, you know, what a hard, strong runner he is as well, Make, making guys pay with the yards after contact. Absolutely. Second down and six, three wide receivers to the near side for the Tigers. There's the snap. Parker is going to hand it off. There goes Miles Twyman. Speak of the devil. He's going to be inside and dives to about the 32-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. But another big run there for the Tigers and Miles. Absolutely. Let's see. That one started at the 48-yard line. And he got it down to the 32. 24 24-yard run, yeah. So the Tigers roll back to the line of scrimmage, which is now first and 10 from the Amurchi 33-yard line. Shotgun formation. They're going to fake the handoff. Quarterback slings the ball to an open wow. receiver, but it's over his head. Extends his body trying to call it in, but it was out of reach for Talon Shirey. Uh, yeah, a great pump fake there from Luke Parker. Uh, he was under duress as Caden Atkins came free on the blitz. And if he could have put a little more air under that, I'm sure Shirey could have run under it. But it, just a heck of a play to avoid the sack and get the ball off, honestly. Oh, no doubt. That would have been a highlight real play had they oh. completed it. Shotgun formation, Twyman in the backfield here for second and 10 from the 33, and they're going to hand it off, and that play is blown up right out of the gate. Yeah, they're lucky that that wasn't a turnover. I mean, that that exchange, I mean, the, our Murchie defenders were there as the ball was being handed off. Lost five or six yeah. yards on that play. Yeah, and that was uh, Hayden Phillips, who absolutely rocked Marion Floyd, one of the hardest hits we've seen all season. Uh, earlier, so that's uh, that's another tackle for loss for, for Phillips. So third down and 15, ball is now at the 38-yard line. Tigers with it in a 21-0 lead. Parker drops back into the pocket. It collapses, and now he's going to have to put the ball in the air, connects with Talon Shirey, makes it happen, gets inside the 20 down to about the 17. And I, Boy. Tell, I tell you what, I don't. he was tight roping the line of scrimmage there. Um, and I think he did a marvelous job of, of not crossing it as I watch the replay here. He, he's, yeah, yeah, I don't see a flag on the play, and that's going to be a huge first down, Matt. So they get it inside the 20 to the 17. First and 10 Tigers, two wide receivers far side, one near side working right to left. There's the snap to Parker. He's going to run the ball up the middle after faking the handoff to Twyman. He gets inside the 10. A good run there for the quarterback, Luke Parker. Is that about a nine-yard nine run? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they started at the 18, and they got that all the way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, so first and goal, Tigers. There's the snap. Going to hand the ball off to Miles Twyman. Tries to cut back inside, but he's going to be stuffed after – no gain on the play, it looks like to me. Yeah, no, no, that time Twyman took the handoff, tried to cut it back across the field, but the Indians did a good job staying home and defending that cutback lane. So 8.44 remaining in the third quarter. Tigers in the red zone here, second and goal from the eight. And here's the snap to Parker. He's going to turn. Hands it off. Miles Twyman breaks free, dives towards the end zone, and he is going he to is be in. in. An eight-yard plunge for Miles Twyman and the Darlington Tigers. And, Ian, they strike again. They sure did. 
opening up the half with an impressive drive, a nice mix of run and pass. Luke Parker looked really, really sharp on that drive. Miles Twyman looked really, really sharp on that drive uh, as he had a few big carries there and caps it off with an eight-yard touchdown run. Tochukwu Obioha is on for the extra point. And here comes the kick. It is on the way. And that one is going to be through. Four for four on the night yeah. for so Obioha. Score moves to 28 to zero. Now with 8.30 left to go in a ball game. Matt, that was just what the doctor ordered. Took three and a half minutes off the clock and tacked on another seven points. So if you look at the scenario here, they were up 14 nothing when they got the ball for their last possession of the first half. They won the toss, they deferred to the second. They got seven points right before they went in the locker room, get the ball at their own 20 drive, 80 yards on the first drive of the second half. Eight yard touchdown run by Miles Twyman and now you're up 28 nothing. You've doubled your lead on these last two possessions and you are in control of this ball game at home. And this is a big one for Darlington. It's, man, it's huge. You. And, you know, obviously because of the playoff implications and keeping things alive, all their goals in front of them because of the region, but also as a response to the tough game that they had last week, come out and build a 28 to nothing lead against a much improved Almerchie team that's been making some noise this year. Um, you know, this is a great response from this squad. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and you look at the scenarios going forward here, Matt, and we can talk about that a little bit later as Obioha lines up to kick. Here comes the kick from Obioha. It is on the way. That one is going to fly end over end, fielded at the 20, will be brought out. He has got a seam and some speed going. Nice return yeah. there for number 14, Easton Jackson, who gets it out close to the 40. Yeah, yeah. best field position, starting field position of the night for the Indians who will look to get something going on offense. Man, it's a Thursday night, but the Tigers fans showed up for homecoming. Yes, and they the did. Indians fans have traveled well, you know, cross county. Hey, everybody knows what's at stake here in this game, and both these teams playing some high-level football throughout the season, so people want to show up and see some Thursday night lights. Going to have a wide receiver on each side of the formation. Quarterback Lively lines him up here in the gun. First and 10 for the Indians. They're going to hand it off to Coonley. He tries to find a light running lane, and he gets it out to about the 45. So good pick up there on first down for the Indians, about four or five yards. And Matt, that time they handed it off to Coonley, who's a, a load to take down. That's a big guy. But you can, you know, the size advantage might, might tilt towards the Indians, but when it comes to speed, this Tigers team is clearly the quicker of the two teams. Looks like we're going to have a timeout. Man, right. that AC yep. feels good. It does, man. The Indians take a timeout. <laughs> Darlington leads it 28 to 0. We're back in 30 seconds. Well, it's about this time, Ian, where I normally say, got any quick score updates for us? But no, you don't. I'd love to throw some out there. I will tell you this. The Diamondbacks beat the Phillies. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Go Diamondbacks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not really interested in watching, but I do not like the Phillies. Yeah, I'm done with baseball for this season, no doubt. There's a little screen pass up the middle, and that's going to be incomplete. A flag. A late one came in there. Yeah. I'm interested to see what this call is. So third down coming up here for the Indians, but let's see about the penalty. Yeah, yeah, might be a hold on Darlington. I saw the official point towards Darlington, but now he's talking to Coach Groves, so it must be on uh, on the Indians as he decides what to do. And they're going to move him back. An eligible receiver downfield. And that will back the Indians up five yards. And they'll replay second down. 
Glad you're with us tonight on WLAQ, or if you're watching on the live stream, produced by Northwest Georgia Media and provided by the Darlington School YouTube channel. Great production that they put on with that. No it's, doubt about it, man. We get compliments about the broadcast everywhere we go. Shotgun formation, one wide receiver to the near side. That's Seagraves. They're going to run it off to the left. Lively's going to keep it and try to string this play out and get to the edge, but uh, the Tigers aren't having it, Ian. <laughs> Great defense there. Great sideline to sideline pursuit. And we've really seen Darlington's defense settle in the first couple of drives. Our Murchie was getting a little push and, and powering it between the tackles. But when they've tried to bounce it to the outside, there has been nothing there. Nothing at all. Three, third down and nine here for the Indians. 7.35 left to go in the third quarter of the football game with Darlington leading at 28 to zero. They're going to line with everybody up tight, in tight rather, and quarterback rolls to the right side, looking to throw this football, and it's going to put it in the air, connects with Seagraves, and he gets pummeled immediately after a pickup of about four yards, but that sets up a fourth yeah. down there. Eh, kind of an interesting spot here for this one. I mean, you're down 28 nothing. We're midway through the third. Uh, I would not be surprised if our merchant decides to roll the dice. The defense has not played bad. I know they're down 28 to nothing, but you've got to remember Darlington's had a great field position. Two of those scores came off turnovers, but the Tigers' offense seems to, to really be finding their footing as well. So uh, I think the offense is going to stay on the field here, but they're going to take a timeout to think about it. All right, well, let's take it with them. 6.49 left to go in the third quarter. Darlington leads it 28 to zero. Fourth down and four coming up for the Indians. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Get ready to slam dunk into local high school basketball action with Northwest Georgia Media. From the regular season to the playoffs, we've got you covered. Don't miss a single game. Catch all the excitement live and in high definition. Follow us on X and Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Northwest Georgia Media, your home for high school hoops. Let the games begin. We welcome you back to the Lakeside tonight. Darlington football on a Thursday night, and things are going strong for the Tigers. 28-0 over the Almerchi Indians in. The Indians have decision here to make. Fourth down and four. They got the ball at their own 46-yard line, and it looks like they bring the offense back out onto the field. So. I, I love the decision, man. You're, you're down four scores. It's, it's now or never. You've got to put a scoring drive together. So Luke Lively lines him up in the gun. They're going to send two wide receivers to the far side on fourth and four. There's the snap. Quarterback is going to keep the football, and they're going to come up short. Bodie Powers, yeah. or is that – that was Henry Ledbetter? I can't – that eight I think is it was so 18, good. yeah. Yeah, that, that eight is bunched up, and we've been getting used to him as 67. So it was Henry Ledbetter <laughs> on the tackle, bringing him down, forcing the turnover on downs on our Murchie's first drive of the second half. And Darlington will take over, and good field position has been one of the big stories of the night. This time they will start at the 47 of our Murchie. See if the Tigers can get out there and cash in. Put this game even further out of reach with 6.46 left to go in the third quarter. Shotgun formation, two wide receivers on the far side for Parker. He takes the snap, turns. They're going to hand it off. Bodie Powers getting the carry this time. And I think he probably got a couple yards there before he stopped his forward motion and pushed him back. We'll see where the spot is. You know, one thing we ask uh, Coach Groves every week, are there any young players who we're going to see a little bit more of? And every week he mentions Bodie Powers, and, and Bodie has, has had some, some good touches. we got an Indian down there. It looks like a cramp. Uh, but uh, Powers gets the carry there, and with a 28 nothing lead, you got to wonder if we're going to see some of the younger Tigers get out there and get some, some reps. Perhaps so. And again, the regular season going to be winding down here in a couple of weeks. Darlington here tonight hosting on Murchie and the next to last game of the regular season. Next week will be a bye week. So we'll have two Fridays without Darlington Tigers football. That's going to seem strange wow. tomorrow and next week. And then um, you'll get back at it up at Sam Arbicane against trying to wrap up the regular season. And who knows what will be at stake for that game after everything shakes out the next couple of weeks. Right, right. Uh, there's a lot going on. And I, I was hinting to this before Darlington kicked it off uh, that last time. But uh, let's talk about what's on the line. Darlington 
Looks like they're going to win this one tonight, up 28-0 midway through the third quarter. Uh, and they secure this victory. They get a bye week, which they desperately need. Yeah, they've got Sam Wooten back this week. They've got the Marion Floyd, but there's some other players that they'd love to get healthy. And if you look over on the sideline, you've got Evan Parton uh, and Hendricks Jones. Uh, and Sammy Kacheska's in pads, but he's not playing tonight. Uh, and let's not forget, he's not just quarterback. He's a starting defensive back as well who, who makes a lot of plays on defense. So that week off allows them to get healthy before they go on the road for an absolute showdown with Trine. What happens tomorrow night between Trine and Pepperell? It's huge. If, if try, either, either way, the, one of those teams gets their first region loss. So if, Darlington, if, if Trine beats Pepperell and then Darlington beats Trine, you've got yourself a three-way tie. But also, don't forget, Pepperell still has Dade County on the schedule, and you cannot look past the Wolverines. That is a tough, hard-nosed football team that's going to come right at you and hit you in the mouth. And uh, while I think Pepperell will be favored in that game, I wouldn't be shocked if Dade County was able to upset the Dragons. And, and sometimes we talk about Dade County because it's like they're on this far-off land, but if there's one guy that coaches in this region, not at Dade County, that knows about Dade County, it's Coach Hurst at Pepperell. So. Uh, no doubt he knows what's going on with that team and we'll have his guys ready for that game. But uh, there's a pass there for the Darlington Tigers out to Trebus, and he is going to be tripped up after a nice game that sets up in third and short here for the Tigers. Luke Parker just keeps completing passes here as he has warmed up. No doubt about it. I've got him pegged at 8 of 12 for 98 yards and two touchdowns, but it looks like that one's coming back. And it will. I'm not sure. I didn't see. I didn't catch the call, but a five-yard penalty. So the ball is going to be at the 48-yard line as we get ready for the Tigers to come back to the line of scrimmage now with second down and 15 to go here for this play. And now they'll run the offense back to the line, send two by receivers to the far side, a couple here on the near. Parker getting ready to take the snap from the gun. He's got it. Drops back, looking to throw, and he's going to put the ball up the middle. Connects with the receiver. That's Talon Shire. He's off to the races inside the 15, 10, 5. Gone. That's going to be a 53, or actually a 47-yard play, rather, for a touchdown, and the Tigers strike again just like that. Another big play for this high-octane offense from the Darlington Tigers. Wow. 47-yard 47 47 yards. touchdown, Matt. Here's Obi Oha on for the extra point attempt. He's been perfect tonight. And this will put the Tigers up 35 to zero with 551 left to go in the third quarter of the game. That one's gonna be a little bit low, but it sneaks over. Five and for five. Five for five, as you mentioned, 35-0. Let's, let's talk about Luke Parker's performance tonight. Uh, he is eight for 12 for 136 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. And we've seen him make some really, really good decisions in the pocket. Earlier, he tried a deep ball to Shirey on the first drive of the second half where he pumped, faked, and avoided what looked like it was clearly going to be a sack. Almost got a touchdown there. But that last play, Matt, he dropped back, and you watched him progress through three or four reads, and he climbed the pocket, stepped up, and found Shirey streaking across the middle, hit the explosive playmaker, and Shirey did the rest of the work. But a great job there by Luke Parker. Very patient. He's played really, really well tonight. Somebody must have sent a message to him down there and said, hey, man, you're in the running for the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game uh, because as the game progresses, keep stepping it up. Right, right, right. He's, I mean, he's really, really played well this quarter. He's been red hot uh, making the right reads and decisions with the ball. So the Tigers lead at 35-0, to 5.51 left to go in the third quarter. We may have a running clock here coming up in the final quarter of this football game. It is possible. Obi Oha to kick it away here for the Tigers. Ball is in the air. That one's going to fly end over end. Will be fielded by Jacob Seagraves, who brings it out, stays up, shakes off a couple of guys, and now he streaks down the sidelines down to about the 30, I want to say probably 35, 36 yard line. We'll see where they put it. Matt, the Astros are leading the Texas Rangers three to nothing. I'm going to keep feeding you baseball scores. Thank you, man. I appreciate uh, I that. I know you're dying to know. Oh yeah. I don't like any of the teams left, but I guess if I've got to root for any of them, it'll be it'll be the Diamondbacks. Why not? 
Yeah, if the, the, the Braves aren't in it, I'm just not interested. Unless the Red Sox. I do like the Boston Red Sox. but Or if there's a really great story yeah. out there, you know. I could get behind the Cubs if they were in the playoffs. So the Indians will come back to line of scrimmage, send two wide to the far side. Tigers lead at 35-0. And here's the snap. They're going to turn, hand the football off. Coonley's got it. And he gets about two or three yards here on the first play. You know, I might should have sent our buddy Steve Conrad a message and let him know that the game's today. I don't know if anybody told him because we hadn't heard from him tonight. So and we usually do. Um, he's going to be wanting to know what, you know, where's the game coming up tomorrow. Well, you'll just have to send him a link of the live stream yeah. and he can, he can watch it. Second down and seven here for the Indians. Lively takes the snap, drops back, looking to throw. It looks like puts the ball in the air. Nice pass, and that's intercepted. Talon Shirey picks it off, and he's headed back the other way after scoring on a big touchdown pass on the previous drive. He's streaking down towards the near side, inside the 20, and barrels out of bounds in the red zone. Wow, interception return gets the Tigers in scoring position in the red zone. And, and I like the aggressiveness there from our merch. You're down 35 nothing. They take a shot downfield. Uh, but Talon Shirey, that was his ball. He went up and got it. And then he takes it from the 34 all the way back. Where are they marking that ball at, Matt? It looks like the 15-yard line. Yeah, so add an interception to Shirey's Whew. stat line tonight. And he's a guy that contributes in all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. Shotgun formation too wide on the far side for the Tigers. Parker lines them up. Powers in the backfield. They're going to hand it to him. He tries to find a seam and maybe got a couple of yards there on that play. Hard run there by Bodie, and it's second and eight. Yeah, the freshman getting some prime time reps here in the third quarter. And Jaron Payne coming off a little bit gimpy, it looks like. Hope he's all right. So second down and eight for the Tigers. They've got the ball on the 12 yard line. Shotgun formation, Bodie Powers in the backfield here with Parker. Here's the snap. They're gonna turn, give it to Bodie. He runs towards the near side and he's gonna be brought down by the Almerchi Indians and number 21, Matthew Hampson, one of their linebackers. Good solid defense there from the Almerchi Indians. Jaren will set up a third and long. Jaron Payne runs back out on the field. Now there's going to be two wide receivers on the far side. Shotgun formation, Powers in the backfield here with Parker. There's the snap, Parker dropping back, looking to throw. He's got company in the backfield. He's going to put the ball towards the end zone, connects with Talon Shirey again. And this time he is able to connect for a touchdown pass of what, about 17 yards, was that? Yeah, nope. 17, yeah, yep. no, 12, 12, 12 yards. yards. excuse me. 12 yards. I looked at the scoreboard, it was actually 12 yards. Have yourself a night. Twelve yard pass to Talon Shirey. Another outstanding job, uh, you know, Shirey getting open in the back of the end zone. Point after is good from Obioha, who remains perfect, Ian. But again, there was pressure there, and Parker stayed in the pocket, didn't get flushed out, climbed the ladder, and uh, delivered another strike, his fourth touchdown pass of the game. Shirey second. Shirey has six receptions by my count. I may have missed one, uh, but he has six receptions for 105 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, so he's certainly been the favorite target. But tonight, on the night, uh, Parker is 9-13, for 148 yards and four touchdowns. And in less than three minutes, Talon Shirey has caught a touchdown pass of 47 yards, intercepted a pass, and caught another touchdown pass for 12 yards. Yeah, and I think he returned that one. Let's see, so 16 all the way down to the to the eight. That's another 42. So I think it was a 54-yard return on that interception too. Wow. So, yeah. Yep. These guys are going to make it difficult on us tonight here at the end of the game for the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game. Oh, they sure are. Yeah. But that's what Tigers do, man, because you get great team effort from these guys every single week. A lot of guys contributing, and it's been a great team effort tonight for this team, and this is a great bounce-back game here for the Tigers. you got a young man doing 42 push-ups down there. Wow. He 
you got this kid. And if you can't, Matt will come do it. Oh, I was, about, I was literally about to say, don't even say it. You keep bringing that up. Uh, we should do a live show where you uh, you do point, uh, push up for every point the Tigers have scored all season live at Bucky's. There's this quick kick from Obi Oha. It'll be brought out by Seagraves. He spins around at the end of the play and gets it out to about the 34 yard line. Maybe we can raise the stakes. And first, you have to eat one of those triple meat sandwiches and then oh, do the. Don't push even bring that up again, man. That was a brutal night. I'm in there, and we we're having to pull off the side of the road because there's meat falling on the steering wheel and off the side of the seat and all kind of stuff. Ian's over there laughing, and I'm sitting there going, "My my car is ruined." It's got. It's I have got to get his, a detail his, his from the beautiful meat. new, very very sleek new Honda CRV hybrid that he's he's rolling around in these days and he he was having a meat avalanche coming from his body <laughs> sandwich on the drive home had, I to, was had to pull over too, at, a, at a closed gas station and, uh, and clean out the meat I'm surprised the cops didn't come over there what are y'all doing we're cleaning up meat here's the snap <laughs> they give it to Lively Lively keeps it rather and he's going to be brought down rather quick by this Tigers defense these guys are pumped up tonight Ian they are they are this is a team coming off a tough tough second half really i mean they played pepperell uh toe to toe in the first half and the dragons just got the better of them uh over in lindale but you can tell they're ready to shake that one off and move on ball now to the 35 yard line second down and eight here for the indians <laughs> here's something funny i'll share with you here in just a couple of moments i almost feel guilty now though two wide receivers to the near side one on the far there's the snap dropping back is going to be lively going to put the ball in the air and that's going to yeah. be incomplete on the sidelines i just got a text from our buddy steve and uh he said someone just texted me and reminded me of the game tonight sorry we missed the earlier part of the game you and Ian sound like you're having a great night. Always, so, yeah, always. Any night at Chris Hunter Stadium is going to be a, a fun one. So glad to hear from you, Steve. We missed you throughout uh, the first part of the game, and then, I, like I say, I felt guilty. I'm like, you know what? I might should have let him know that the game's today. Oh, well, so, it threw us off yeah, too. You know, it did. yeah, yeah. It's 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 been an interesting Thursday. Two wide receivers on the far side, one in the near. This is third down and eight for the Indians. They'll drop back, looking to throw. Company in the backfield, and the pass is batted down. And I believe that was Connor Ellison who knocked that down. He was at 1.67, but then it was Henry Ledbetter. So we may have to double check on that. Yeah, but he's he's on my roster as 55 and 67. Okay. So well, uh, we may see if we can get a little I've bit seen, of help on I've that. I've seen 55 out there, too, so maybe – I don't know. It was 67 that made the play. Yeah, but and, and Henry Ledbetter's dad told us that Henry's in 18 tonight. So, anyway, but it was a great play. Batted that pass down. Right. And now, all Murchie will have to punt the ball away. Oh. And it goes over the punter's head. Raglan chases it down and falls on it. And that was a special teams disaster there for the all Indians. It has not been a good night for the Indians tonight. It has not. Raglan was able to fall on that, but it went all the way back to the six. Mm. My goodness, and that's where Darlington offense will take over. They're looking, if they can punch it in, they will put up 28 points in the third quarter. Wow, so the Tigers will roll back to the line of scrimmage, and Parker in there at quarterback is going to send a couple of wide receivers to the far side. You're going to have Shirey and Davis there. Bodie Powers is in the backfield, and Parker takes the snap, turns, he's going to throw into the corner of the end zone, and it gets out of reach of Aiden Davis. That was almost a touchdown there He was the wide open. Play. He, was, he was uncovered. Hmm. I mean, you, you had one guy covering two receivers there, uh, and uh, Luke Parker has been red hot and on target. All, all quarter, but he he missed that one. Hayden yeah, was kinda, wide open. <laughs> kind of sailed on him yeah, a little bit. Yeah. But shotgun formation for second and goal here for the Tigers. Two wide receivers now to the near side, and Powers in the backfield with Parker, and Parker's going to turn, hand it to Powers, tries to muscle through, and they're going to get a stop there. Close to about the five-yard line, I'm guessing. I'll tell you what else you're getting right here. You know, Bodie Powers is getting some valuable reps, mm -hmm. but Demarion Floyd and Miles Twyman, they're over on the sidelines, and you're protecting the rest of this season because those are two players that you really need. You're going to need them in two weeks against trying. And uh, we talked about how great this bye week is going to be for the Tigers to get healthy. They may enter that game at full strength for the first time 
all year. Yeah. Shotgun formation for third and goal. Parker rolls to his left, puts the ball in the air, and did he get it? Yeah. Yes, he did. He's going to make the touchdown grab in the corner of the end zone. Guess who it was? Yeah, it was Talon Shirey again, his third touchdown here in the quarter. Man. <laughs> Good Lord. Five, was that five yards? Yeah, five-yard touchdown toss there. The fifth touchdown toss of the game for Luke Parker, the third touchdown reception for Talon Shirey. Goodness gracious, what a quarter. Indeed. So the Tigers are up 48 to zero. Here's the PAAT attempt from Obi Ojai, and that one is through. He remains perfect. And what a great offensive game and game in general here for the Darlington Tigers. Pitching a shutout too, we yeah, should point out. A 28 point third quarter. And this one's this one's all over, but the crime, Matt. That's. Uh, I imagine we will move to a running clock at this point, but that does have to be agreed on by both coaches. So we will see after this ball's kicked off if that is indeed the case. And I expect we'll see some of the younger Tigers the rest of the way. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, of course, other games, 7A Division One tomorrow, Chattooga at Dade County, Pepples at Trine, and 7AA model's going to be at North Murray. That'll be an interesting game. Rockmart is over at Gordon Central. And 7-4A, you got Sonorville at Cedartown. And 7-5A, what a region that is. Calhoun's up at Dalton, Cartersville at Woodland. Cass is going to be at Hiram. And then tomorrow in 6-6A, the Rome Wolves are going to be hosting River Ridge Knights over at Barron Stadium. So full slate of games tomorrow. Rome Wolves looking for yet another region championship under John Reed. OBO high to kick it away, and that's going to be a squib up the middle. Will be fielded and brought out here by the Indians. Running with the ball is going to be number 45, Andre Neal. And the Indians will get ready to go. <laughs> 49 to nothing, and the clock is not running, so... I don't think Steve, who is texting me now, has a lot of confidence that I can do those push-ups. He sent me some He's laughing got this, emojis Steve. He's and got a message this. about that. Especially if we load him up with a, a brisket pulled pork and sausage sandwich. I've, I've got at this point think, in my life right now what my son would term noodle arms. Yeah. I need to be working on some stuff here. Start training for the great Bucky's push-up challenge. Uh, there you it's go. It's going to be amazing. Maybe the, maybe the beaver mascot will do them with you. So the Indians will get ready to go, and they are going to hand it off and try to run at Coonley. And he is trying to run hard there, but there's tough sledding there in the trenches, and he's going to be brought down after a short gain, if anything. Yeah, he made about three cuts yeah. there trying to find a running lane, and there were none uh, as Sam Wooten closed in. Who else made the tackle there? Had a host of Tigers. So the Indians will go back to the line of scrimmage now with second and 10 after no gain there for Coonley. 124 remaining here in the third quarter. Darlington leads it 49 to zero. Yeah, you heard that right, 49 to zero. And uh, there's another handoff. Not much doing there. Picked up a couple of yards that time, setting up a third down and long. And that has, uh, since, since the first quarter, this has pretty much been the script. Uh, the Darlington's defense has been rock solid up the middle. So third down and seven, under a minute to play now here in this third quarter. We're almost down to the final 12 minutes of the ball game. Lively rolls up under center for this one, sends a wide receiver split wide on each side. He's going to hand off the football, gives it to Coonley. This time he gets some room to run, and they're going to move the chain, still yes, carrying a couple are. of guys with him. They had him by his jersey, couldn't haul him in. Gets close to midfield. And uh, these are Murchie backs, are, are powerful runners, but they need to get that downhill speed going in order to be effective. And Darlington's done a good job hitting them at the line of scrimmage before they can do that. That time, uh, Coonley was able to get the, the engine rumbling a little bit and got the first down. This is first and 10 from the 49 on Murchie, threatening to get it into Darlington territory. And there's the snap. They're going to run a power set there, and they're able to get about five yards there on that play. I think it was a different ball carrier that time. It was. 14. It was number 14, Easton Jackson, senior. Five, five-and-a-half-yard carry there. 
And we are seeing some uh, some fresh jerseys out there here for the Tigers. And that's it, Matt. That's, that's it. it for the third quarter. Darlington Tigers lead at 49 to zero. Let's step out for a one minute break. Welcome you back here to Chris Hunter Stadium. Tigers lead as we get ready for the final 12 minutes, 49 to zero. So this one is in pocket. And uh, boy, what a game from the Darlington Tigers tonight. Bounce back win. But well, we still got 12 minutes left to go with this ball game. We sure do. And the starters look to be done for the night for the Darlington Tigers. Indians line up in an I formation. They're going to turn, hand the football off, try to run it up the middle, and muscle through to try to get a first down. They may be a little short there. Yeah, it's pretty yeah close. based on the spot, yeah. they're going to be a yard shy. Yeah, they went with one of their bigger running backs there on that play and just couldn't quite get what they needed uh, to convert there. But it's going to bring up third down. Going to have two wide receivers, one on each side here for the Indians on third and one. 11.35 and the clock ticking here. Left to go in the football game. Lively lines him up. Shotgun formation this time. There's the snap. He's going to hand it off. And I don't know. Uh, Jackson, I think, yeah. is going to be well, pretty close. Near side officials got him right there at the marker. And it will be a first down. Yep. So first down Indians, they'll move the chains. Keep the drive going. I tell you what, Matt, this is a huge win. Uh, you know, you know, they seized control of it early and, uh, and, and put the Indians at a disadvantage by getting that early lead and have kept their foot on the gas, but the Tigers needed this one. They really did. They really did in a lot of ways. Two wide receivers, one on each side. There's a snap. Quarterback's going to hand it off, gives it to Jackson, finds some room to run, and they're going to haul him down at about the 20, was that the 25 yard line? Yeah. And he got two, another first down. And you've got a few of the Tigers regulars still out there on the field, but we've got a lot of young guys out there too. So our Murchie taking advantage of that. We'll have a brief wrap up show after the game. And we won't be cutting into the scoreboard show tonight because there isn't one. That's so right. we don't have to feel guilty. Lynn, I know you're listening to us back at the studio. So uh, we'll be tuned in tomorrow. Me and Matt, if we indeed go to the ball game and try, and we'll give you all a call to give you a recap. They're going to pitch it to the near side, get it to Jackson, Ooh, and he's going to be brought loose. down. Ball came out, and it looks like the Tigers may have gotten this one. They did. They did. The Tigers have got it. Was that uh, Jaron Payne who came out with that one? It was Jaron Payne. Uh -huh. Here's the pitch. Yeah. It was Easton Jackson on the carry. And it was another. It? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was uh, number 24, 24 who forced the Jace fumble. Jace Donaldson. Yeah. And we've heard, we've heard that name. Uh, Donaldson forces the fumble. And it was indeed Jaron Payne that came away with the recovery. Turnovers have been a, a big problem here for Murchie in this football game. That's been part of the story for That's sure. the fourth of the game. Third fumble, and you had an interception as well. And we have moved to a running clock, Matt. And we'll get to see some young Tigers out here on offense. And I believe the younger Koncheski, Nate, is going to be playing quarterback here. You're right. Two wide receivers on each side here for the Tigers. First and 10, there's the snap. Koncheski turns, hands it off, and nothing doing there on that first play. 
Trying to pick up who the ball carrier was there. Number 25, was it? Cam uh, Skaneski. Skanezny, excuse me. So Sam and the handoff, to, or Nate rather, and the handoff to Cam. And I was talking to some Darlington fans before the game, and I believe the Kincheski's grandfather was flying in to see the game tomorrow. His, oh, flight, was, his flight was arriving tonight. So uh hate that that he didn't get, get here and the, the GHSA stole that opportunity from him. Another handoff. They went <laughs> with Skanezny again. <laughs> and a loss there. So that brings up third and 13 here for the Tigers. 8.06 left to go. But this official shortage is something we've been dealing with for a few years. Yeah. So if you're listening to the broadcast and you like to curse the officials, maybe put on some stripes, get out there, <laughs> and help us keep the games on Friday nights. I, I don't want that job, though. I would not <laughs> want that job. I appreciate there's people out there that do it. Though. Yes. Shotgun formation. This is third and 13. There's the snap. Going to run the football again. They went back to Skanezny. Not much there. And that's going to bring up fourth down and 14 after a loss of a yard. We got an Indian down on mm -hmm. the field. And, Matt, you talk about not wanting that job. I've got an eight-year-old playing baseball this year. Coach pitched baseball. And I've been at two games where the poor umpire out there in a coach pitch eight and under chaotic baseball game is getting berated by parents. Are you and, serious? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I'm um, just like, cool it. <laughs> Control yourselves, people. Calm, people. calm down. Yeah. This person's, who knows what they're getting paid to do it. And y'all are hammering them over a game that is, uh, you know, this is, this is just madness out there. And let's not lose sight of the fact that you just referenced that it's kids. So what kind of example are you right. setting if you're out there raising cane like that at a youth game? Right. And I think you see it in all sports. People love to abuse the officials, but uh, there's nothing like baseball. Something about, something about baseball that really – I mean, the, and the ump has a lot of power in those games, but not in coach pitch, eight and under baseball. I'm sorry. Give the guy a break. <laughs> and right now one of the Almerchi players is needing some help to get off the field. Favoring that right leg, it looks like. He's not putting any weight on that leg right now. Trying to a little bit as yeah, they get close to the sidelines. but hate to see that. Hmm. And yet, you know, Matt, haven't been the Armerchi Indians night tonight, but they've had a heck of a season. They uh, they still have some tough games on their schedule as well. They've played Pepper, but I believe they've still got Dade County and possibly trying. Yeah, I think so. I don't have their schedule sitting yeah. in front of me. Mm, that's a brutal stretch oh, to yes, end. It is. But they did score a 28 nothing shutout over their longtime rival, the Coosa Eagles. Haven't won too many games in that series. And, and Coach Blue certainly putting his stamp on this program. So now we'll see Talon Shirey come out and punt the ball away. You're going to have one man back here, William Pethel, the junior here for the Almerchi Indians, standing close to midfield on the Tiger Paw. Here comes the kick from Talon Shirey. It's a pretty good boot on that one, and Pethel's going to signal the fair catch there and haul that one in. And you got to wonder if he's somehow related to Stan Pethel. I believe he is Joseph Pethel's son, which Joseph okay. is uh, is Stan's son. So yeah. uh, Stan's grandson. Stan <laughs> penned the Rome High uh, fight song in alma mater. So oh, really? Yeah, wow. yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah, great family. I used to hang out with uh, Joseph's brother Rob quite a bit. We used to be neighbors. Yeah. yeah. Well, it has been a good night for the Darlington Tigers here on homecoming. I'm looking out at the homecoming Kings right in front of us. I uh, didn't catch the, the names there as we were kind of recapping things in the, from the first half during the halftime show. But uh, big night here at Darlington as train number four rolls by. Lively under center. He's going to turn, hand it off to Jackson Ian, and he gets a little bit of a running lane there and puts up a big chunk of yards there, about seven or eight yards on first down. No quit in the Armerchi Indians. They'd love to go disrupt this shutout that's being pitched by the Darlington defense. And Coach Ballou's done a tremendous uh, job of this team this year. This is his first season at the helm of the Indians. Got them off to a four and three start, two and one in region play. So uh, they'll bounce back from this. But that's a handoff, and that's going to be close to a first down. I think he might be a yard short of the line to gain. 
I mean, let's face it, man. They've got four wins already this season, and, and there there were strings of seasons where I don't think they had four wins collectively in four years. Oh, yeah. So uh, a lot of growth from this team, and we've seen it in person. Our merchant community is behind their athletic department, so I'm, I know they're excited to have a team that's winning some games. Shotgun formation. They'll turn, hand it off to Jackson again. This time he gets the couple of yards he needs for the first down. And that'll move the chains. Clock rolling, 4.56 left to go in the game. Darlington leads this one 49 to zero over the Almerchie Indians. With the win, the Tigers are gonna move their season record to six and three, securing a winning regular season for the Tigers and Coach Groves here in his first season at the helm of the Darlington Tigers. And they will move more importantly to four and one in region play. Big win. Shotgun formation, first and 10. There's the snap. They're going to pitch it right to Jackson. He breaks free. He's got some room to run. They may get on the board here. They're inside the 15. They're going to be pushed out of bounds. Big hit there from Donaldson. To knock him out of bounds, but uh, Jackson almost took that one to the house. Steve is sending us baseball uh, book Rangers. referrals. Oh, book referrals. Or suggestions, okay. rather. I, I saw the I Rangers. Have to check that out. Rangers have evened it up at three yeah. apiece with the Astros. I definitely would rather the Rangers win that one. I don't think anybody but Houston fans care for the Astros oh, yeah. after all that mumbo jumbo. The, the, uh, banging of the trash cans yeah, and all yeah. that kind of stuff that went on. Yeah. All that garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Quarterback under center here for the Indians. First down. They're going to hand Woo! the ball off and. Heavy hit by the Darlington Tigers I know. defense. I'm going to have to see if I can catch that number because that was a heck of a tackle. Oh, I can't see the number. 19 maybe? Stuart Grigsby? We've heard Coach bring his name up a few times. Great tackle there. First down and 10 here for the Almerchi Indians. Quarterback's going to be under center. They're going to line up in an I formation here for this play. They'll snap, hand the ball off to Jackson again, and he's going to be stopped. And I might have got a couple yards before his forward motion was halted. And Matt, there was some yeah. some scandal announced surrounding the Michigan Wolverines today. I don't know if you. I heard saw that a pop up, but that. I didn't have a chance to read the story. Yeah, something about uh, videoing and stealing signals from the other team, and of course Jim Harbaugh has vehemently. <laughs> Denied, of course, any of that. Quarterback under center eye formation, third down and six. There's a snap, and they are going to run the ball up the middle, carry the pile with them inside the five. I didn't see who the ball carrier was. 42. 42. That's going to be All right, Jackson, Hightower. Jackson Hightower. So it brings up fourth down and short here for the Indians. Trying to get on the board here before this game's over. 2.15 left to go in the ball game. Can the young Tigers out there on defense get a big stop and preserve the shutout? Luke Lively under center. He will get ready to take the snap oh. from the eye, and it looks like the defense yeah. jumps. A little hard count there from Lively. Veteran move. Got the Tigers to jump, and that'll set up a first and goal. And the chances of an Indians touchdown are much improved after that penalty. And we got a player down here for the Darlington Tigers, so the trainer, Donnie's going to come out there and have a look at this young man. I don't see the number of who it is right now. I don't either. But uh, we got 151 remaining in this ball game. Darlington leads it 49-0, to as we pointed out earlier. We're going to have the Honeymoon Bakery Icing on the Cake Player of the Game Award coming up after tonight's broadcast as part of a very brief post-game show. And uh, then we'll wrap things up here. But, you know, all in all, this has been a great night for the Darlington Tigers. And they've come up big in this one, leading it 49-0 to zero with on, under two minutes to play in the ball game. And one advantage of this game being moved to Thursday night is Coach Groves and his staff will be in trying live and in person to scout that Bulldogs team that they take on in two weeks. We've talked about it several times during the game, but how big is this bye week for Darlington uh, the opportunity to get healthy before that huge game to finish the season. Oh, no doubt. You know, you had the game last week at Pepperell. You didn't have Demarion Floyd and Sam Wooten. Both of those guys are back in the game. I uh, still have a few guys that have been held out for this game. One of them, Sammy Koncheski, we didn't even know, um, you know, that he was injured until we were talking to Coach Groves 
earlier in the week. And then tonight he does dress out, runs out with the team, but we hadn't seen him in this game. You may have him back for that particular game and a couple other guys. So uh, we'll see what happens. I liked your scenario that you described earlier with that bye week and the way things have shaken out is potentially being full strength for the first time of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Close out the season, big game. So Yeah, no doubt about it. And if you're a Darlington fan, you're rooting for trying tomorrow. You need you need the Bulldogs to knock off the Dragons. And then you got to go take care of business against trying and if you do that you force a three way tie. I have no idea. Oh, we yeah. talked to Alex Fair. He doesn't either. We don't know what the tiebreaker scenario is. We'll have to do a little research. Uh, that'll be one of our, our homework uh, assignments before we uh, we talk to Coach well we won't talk to Coach Groves next week, but we will have the pick show. So uh, we'll we'll figure those scenarios out, Matt. Indians are back at the line of scrimmage with first and goal. Quarterback lively is under center. He's going to turn, hand the ball off and Touchdown. He's going to get into the end zone. A touchdown here for the Indians. And who was the ball carrier Jackson on that? Jackson Hightower. Jackson Hightower yep. was able to punch it through there mm -hmm. and get the yards that they needed to, to get a score, and, and the Indians mm -hmm. are on the board. They ran the old fullback dive, man. Right. They're one of my favorites to go to on fourth or third and one in NCAA football. Love running that play. <laughs> So the Armerchi Indians get into the end zone late in this game, and we get ready for the extra point from Grayson Perry, the senior kicker here for the Armerchi Indians. And here's the snap. Kick is on the way, and that was going to be through. Oh, yeah. 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 So the score is now 49 to 7. One minute and yeah. 42 seconds left to go in a ball game. And uh, with a running clock, that should be. Do it. Once the Indians kick this one off, Darlington should be able to salt this last minute and 42 seconds away and walk out of Chris Hunter Stadium with a 49-7 victory. Hi, Matt, you looking forward to any college games this weekend? You know, I am, man. Um, you know, of course, we talked earlier about the Gamecocks winning early in the week, so that was a great start to the week college football-wise. But I'm really interested to see how this Ohio State-Penn State game goes. I kind of agree with you. You talked about on our pick show earlier this morning about how you felt like that would be a defensive struggle and uh, be a low-scoring game. I kind of have a tendency to agree with that. We didn't get to really dive into that much this morning because we were so limited yeah, on our we time. We had the fastest hour of radio this morning. Uh, that one I'm looking forward to. Of course, you know, being a Georgia Tech fan, it'll be fun to watch them play Boston College. I think that's a winnable game for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, setting up their matchup with North Carolina next week. Trying to think what else other games are on the docket for this week. You got um, South, South Carolina, Carolina Missouri. Missouri. That's, that's pretty. Tennessee, a lot Alabama. Of in that game. Tennessee and um, Alabama. Oh, yeah. That'll be an I'll, interesting one to watch as well. Always look forward to that one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, should be a good day. Of course, Georgia and Florida off this week as they get ready for the world's, world's largest, largest outdoor cocktail, cocktail party. party. Yeah. <laughs> Not supposed to call it that anymore. Well. Not supposed to do a lot of things. That's right. It's the world we live in. <laughs> yeah. There's the kick. Grayson Perry. And uh, that's going to go into the end zone. He does have a really nice leg. Yeah, there. yeah, wow. absolutely. So 142 left in this one. And we're going to get to see the Darlington Tigers in the, your favorite formation to be in here in a couple of moments. Unless you're Mario yeah. Cristobal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yeah, he's never going to live that one down. Ever. Ever. <laughs> and they may, I mean, when you're up 49-7, I, I don't yeah. think it's okay to run a few plays. you got some young guys out there. So, uh, let them get out there and, and take a crack at it. So, new quarterback into the football game. I think that's Henry Ledbetter, isn't it? Yeah. And they're going to hand the football off and run it up to the far side. Yep, Ledbetter in at quarterback. This is the third quarterback we've seen tonight for the Tigers. No game there on the play there on a handoff. Under a minute to play here in the ball game. Going to have two wide receivers to the near side here for the Tigers as they get ready to line up with 50 seconds and the clock ticking here, leading at 49 to 7. And this one's just about in the books here. It sure officially. is, Matt. And this will be the last time Darlington has to snap the football. 14 seconds on the play clock. Tigers run to the line of scrimmage. Henry Ledbetter is going to send two wide receivers to the far side, a couple of the near. And Ledbetter takes the snap, 
and he's going to hand the football off. They cut up towards the near side with it. Running the football was Sam, um, Cam Skinez, Skinezny. Sorry, I'm working on that one still. And he picks up four or five yards there, about five yards actually. And that's it. That will yeah. do it, Matt. Seven seconds ticking off the clock. And we are at zero. Tigers win. Tigers win it tonight. Final score of 49 to 7. Move the season record to 6 and 3. 4 and 1 in region play. And we're going to send it back to the studio for a quick two minute timeout. Two minute timeout down the line. That gives us a little conference time here to talk about the player of the game. We'll come back with that and wrap things up here from Chris Hunter Stadium. We're back in two minutes. Tigers win it. Kusa Steel is a family-owned full-line steel service center located in Rome, Georgia. Since 1972, we've been working to make our customers more efficient by providing steel product supply and processing all in one place. We are proud to provide a large range of products, including hot rolled and cold finished steel, stainless steel, galvanized steel, aluminum, and alloys. Our capabilities enable us to assemble and process steel orders within days, shortening your lead time. Kusa Steel, steel for your project. At Northwest Georgia Media, we're all about capturing the moments that matter to you. From sports to arts, from concerts to business events, we're equipped to share what's happening in your world, live and in high definition. We leverage cutting edge technology and a knowledgeable crew to see that your most unforgettable events remain just that, unforgettable. You've got the graphics at a high level, ESPN style, scoreboard angles, instant replay, anything you would expect to see on a, a regular broadcast, we're getting in a high school ball game. They're set up, you wouldn't even know that they're even in the building. You just trust that they're getting the job done. Northwest Georgia Media, where the world is your audience. big night for the Darlington Tigers tonight. They are going to pick up the victory 49 to 7 at home here on a Thursday night under the Thursday night lights over the Almerchi Indians again improving the record to 6 and 3 overall on the season and uh, 4 and 1 in region play and now it's time that you've been waiting for the Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game and yet again the Tigers have given us a pretty tough decision tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, four turnovers forced by the defense here tonight in uh, what was close to being a shutout. Hermitage scored one late on them to get those seven points. Uh, you know, you had great performances across the board. Uh, Talon Shirey certainly had his name right there, ready to take this award once again. He contributes every week. He had four touchdowns and an interception tonight. But we're going to give the slight nod to a young man who had to step up and, and come in and, and fill in for uh, starting quarterback all season, Sammy Koncheski. It was Luke Parker who came in. He was, uh, by my count, 10 of 14 for 148 yards and five touchdowns. Uh, I really felt like he just got hotter and hotter as the game went on, did a great job uh, climbing the pocket and making his his. Uh, reads and going through his progression there and putting the ball on the money. So five touchdowns for Luke Parker, the junior quarterback tonight. He is our Honeymoon Bakery icing on the cake player of the game. Yep. Enjoy uh, that prize there, Luke. You earned the heck out of it. And a great game by the Darlington Tigers tonight. Great team effort and bounce back victory. Congratulations to the team and also Coach Groves and the rest of the coaching staff. 
Uh, what a great effort tonight. And you got to know, Coach has got to be very, very pleased with how that game went tonight. That's exactly yeah. what they wanted yeah, to do. Yeah, coming off a tough loss, this is exactly what they needed going into a bye week. They can ride this momentum. They know what they're getting in two weeks when they travel up to Sam R. McCain to take on the Trine Bulldogs. And, Matt, I've got a, I got a good feeling they're going to be ready. Well, Ian, I don't know about you, man. This is Thursday night lights, and so that means we got to get up and go to work and head to the office at the normal time instead of sleeping in and getting ready for game day and that kind of stuff tomorrow because tomorrow's a work day. So we're going to wrap this thing up pretty quickly. I'm sure Lynn ready to get some shut-eye, too, before he goes uh, to his gig tomorrow morning as well. So we're going to wrap things up, and uh, we appreciate everybody being here for the broadcast, whether you're watching on on w or uh, watching on the, the YouTube stream provided by Darlington School, produced by Northwest Georgia Media, or listening on the radio. We appreciate you being with us. Absolutely, man. And we would have been on time had I, it been a Friday I know, night. I know. So, you know, for once. But, of course, it's Thursday. It, so, pleasure being with you uh, tonight, Matt. It was a great night. Yeah, I appreciate you being here too, man. And, uh, again, just thank everybody for tuning in. And congratulations to Coach Grove and the Groves and the Darlington Tigers on 49-7 to victory at home tonight. And uh, we'll see what happens the rest of the way. Bye week coming up next Friday. And then for the final week of the regular season, it's a trip up to Sam R. McCain and trying to face the Bulldogs. Big time showdown coming up. And you can tune in for it on the live stream and also the radio coming up on November the 3rd. Isn't that what that Friday date is? Is it the 3rd? Yep, it's yeah, the 3rd. I think it is, yeah. You're right. So that'll be the next broadcast for you. Well, anyway, for Ian Griffin and Lynn Butler back at the studio and everybody involved in the video stream tonight, we're going to go ahead and sign it off. Happy story tonight. Darlington Tigers win it 49 to 7 at home over the Omerchi Indians and that's going to put a wrap on it for tonight hope you have a great evening everybody CBS Sports Radio is coming up next on WLAQ good night